through water. Climb. Jump. Do loop to loops. There's nothing Team America's Super Stunt Dirt Bike can't conquer. The Super Stunt Dirt Bike, designed with knobby wheels for super spectacular stunts. Team America, they go through water. They jump. They do loop to loops. They're Team America, the Super Stunt Dirt Bikes from Ideal. I was most surprised to receive a call from General Telephone the other day. I thought they had the wrong Simon Jones. But no, they wanted me to do a commercial. So I said, not mentioning the money as yet. What do you want me to say? And he said GTE had spent $4 billion on technical gadgetry or some such stuff. And I said, that doesn't sound very personal. I don't think the folks will much go for that. So he said he'd get back to me. And when he does, I'll get back to you. Happy birthday, Miss Liberty. Hey, Dad. Aaron, not now, Aaron. This is important. The 1987 Nissan Sentra. It drives like an expensive car, but it goes for so little. The Sentra sells itself. You test drive it. You won't go home without one. Come on, Dad, please. Really? What's so know? important, Aaron? Me. I'm the Statue of Liberty, and I guard America. Because as long as there is America, you know you have a chance. You're right, baby. That's really important. You'll be up a tree if you pass up the San Diego Zoo's 70th birthday because you'll miss getting this month's free birthday pin. The zoo is open every day. At last, the secret of Brock's hooch was coconut candy. She carefully selected two coconuts and... So that's Hula Chew's secret. Two kinds of coconut, blended for perfect taste and texture. Drenched in a tidal wave of Brock's deep, dark, delicious, real chocolate. The coconut goodness of Hula Chew's changed my life. New coconut Hula Chew's from Brock's. Did you know that right now, during Color Tile's 30th anniversary sale, selected no-wax vinyl tile is half price, and you could win a house? I'm done. And did you know that wall coverings and paint are half price? And you might win two cars. I'll be right back. And you should know ceramic and mosaic tile is half price, too. And there's thousands of prizes. Catch up with you later. Color Tile's 30th anniversary half price sale. Some things can wait, some things can't. <laughs> I don't know about them folks at Knott's Farm. First they dig us women home for a bunch of dancing dolphins and diving doggies. And now they're giving away a free house, but not just any house, a three-bedroom house with indoor plumbing. <laughs> That's right. Visit Knott's now through July, and you could win a fully furnished three-bedroom, two-bath house by Golden West Homes. Two bathrooms? That's one for me and one for you. <laughs> it's the most lethal G.I. Joe team yet. Capcom Street Fighter 2. No way! Wait. There's Kyle, Ryu, Sangi, Wonka, yeah. and Dalcine. What's the Dawson? <laughs> oh, some with real ninja moves. Hey! My Cooper's got Street Fighters too. Vega, Sagat, Dalrog, and me, Air Force One. They look unbeatable. God! <laughs> you know them, you love them. So correct, though. Have come Street Fighter 2 figures these sold separately. Oh, I like them. Introducing something fresh and new from Planters. Oh. A whole family of snacks for you and your family. Try cheddar cheese balls and cheese curls. Mmm, delicious. Crunch into those crispy corny corn chips. And don't forget Planters twist on an old favorite, pretzel oh. twists. Once you and your family get your hands on these scrumptious new snacks from Planters, you won't stop at a handful. <laughs> Listen, are you fighting pimples and oily skin? Super Strength Clearasil can do more for you. More than Oxy-5. More than Dry and Clear. More than Oxy-10. Because you get both benzol peroxide for pimples and bentonite for oily skin. You look better fast. Powerful Clearasil. Get the you got that confidence, you got that style. You got that winning look, and so will a smile, so will a smile. And look at the view now. You in April now, you're stepping out. Look how good you look now. You took the world out, you 
If you hate cleaning bathrooms, you'll love new Scrub Free Bathroom Cleaner. Scrub Free works as hard as a cleanser, but with no scrubbing. Here's proof. With cleansers, you have to scrub hard. With foam, you still work hard, but it doesn't get as clean. But new Scrub Free works on contact with no scrubbing. Just put it on and wipe it off. See, clearly superior. New Scrub Free cleans faster, easier. You'll love new Scrub Free. It's clearly superior. You're young, you're active on the go, you wear hang too, and you know, gentlemen, prefer paint. Paint to a sheer and shake these through, at a price that's right for you, gentlemen, prefer paint. Out of the package, the leading brand looks like this. Haynes too, like this. Me too. Times have changed with one thing true. Looking good feels nice to you. Now get great savings on Haynes too. We're gonna get you over a barrel so you get to have a barrel of fun. Cause when you tap a barrel head with beer, you get to thirst right over and done. You get a real rich green big head so nice. A glass style flavor that stands up the eyes. So get to thirst over a barrel head America and have a barrel of fun. This is Creme Rouge Lipstick by L'Oreal. Rich emollients make color stay smooth, stay supple, stay true, stay fresh. Unlike anything that's ever touched my lips before. Of course, the colors are extraordinary. Of course, they last. They're L'Oreal. And I'm worth it. Creme Rouge Lipstick by L'Oreal. Don't grow up too fast, big guy. When you grow up, you won't have people to protect you and take care of you 24 hours a day. And that's why smart grown-ups buy Nationwide Insurance. Because Nationwide has the flexibility to provide many kinds of insurance plans for many kinds of grown-ups. Nationwide Insurance. It's blanket protection 24 hours a day. Every morning I use Listerine antiseptic, for me. In the morning, your mouth has millions more bad breath germs than the night before. Listerine kills the germs that can cause morning breath, and it works for hours. At night I use it a second time for Joanne. Listerine strong, keeps my breath clean a good long time. Listerine, one time for me. A second time for me. Listerine, twice a day. Once for me. A second time for someone else. Stay crispy and crunchy in milk. Tastes like crisp little honey graham crackers. Oh, those golden grams, golden honey, just a touch with grams, golden wheat. Part of this good, nutritious breakfast. Try those golden grams and have a golden day. We're taking everything out of our house that we clean with Glass Plus, the whole house cleaner. Watch my petunias, honey. Of course, Glass Plus cleans mirrors and windows without streaking. And Glass Plus cleans all these appliances, plus stove tops, plus bathroom fixtures, plus a whole lot more. Got a whole house to clean? Get the whole house cleaner. Glass Plus, it cleans windows, plus a whole lot more. Okay, honey, we can put it all back now. High over the center ring, the perilous platform plunge. Are you ready, Harvey? As soon as I eat my bitter honey candy bar. Bitter honey. Six pieces of chewy, long-lasting candy with nuts and just a bit of honey. Delicious flavor that lasts as long as you chew. And chew, and chew, and chew, and chew. Bitter honey. If you're in a hurry, forget it. Oh, what would you do if one triple left one triple top stay? I'd shout it out. Well, what would you do if a triple decker left a triple top stay? I'd shout it out. Shout it out because Shout's exclusive triple power jet saturates the stain, penetrates it, and shouts it out. 
What would you do if a triple dip left a triple tough stain? I'd shout it out. You want a tough stain out? Get the triple power jet and shout it out. I'm not ready to go yet, okay? I'm not ready. You gotta wait. Just, I got shit to do. I'm in the middle of something, all right? Just hold on. Watch your mouth, <laughs> or don't come in here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, people. Come on. We're adults here. You know <laughs> what? <laughs> what is the point? The... Yeah, yeah, we're adults here. I got a fucking Burger King fucking thing on my head. We're all fucking adults here, guys. People, in my chat, two words. What are they? Two words. Let me let me see the chat flood. Let me see the chat flood. Okay. Uh, next caller. Please. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, which translate in American to dick and balls. I got flip flops. These are my flip flops. Yeah, I, I, I really like my my flip flops because I can like I can like put them on. I can and the because look, watch me watch me put them on. I can put them on all by myself. Watch me put watch me put them on. Look, can, are you watching? Look, these are my flip flops. Thanksgiving Day. I remember it clearly. I was Thanksgiving Day. I was I was inserting myself in somebody else's fucking business as a uh, as a cash grab and you know. This channel is harsh reality. Karen Yak se jodió la sucia vida. Amen. This is Jonathan Lee Bridges. This is, I have, I have cheeseburgers. I'm going to put cheese on them. I'm going to make sure that I have my hamburgers because I'm a big boy now and I can make the hamburgers. My mom lets me use the stove now. I'm just like wow they're they i like receipts and, and and they brought receipts like they had ev they had evidence to back up everything they said and i'm like okay well there's got to be another side to this right like this can't this can't no this is too fantastic yeah because you're not going to just jump to the conclusion that there's a conspiracy amongst cops to cover up a murder you know what i mean yeah i mean cops and just like soccer moms and shit like that's what made it even crazier like <laughs> Uh, yeah, get it, Betty. Yeah, did you get have it. a close relationship with your mom? Get it, Betty. Oh, of course, get I it. still do. Yeah. <laughs> my, my older sister was kind of sad. She was more of the prissy girl. That, like, that is the best the shit fucking ever. You know, shopping ever. for the dresses with mommy. I was the, you know, the tomboy that liked playing with the people. Shout out to Cherry for just being just easily the most faithful and loyal supporter that I've ever had, man that someone could have that tenacity with loyalty. Um, and I'm really blessed to have someone like Cherry uh, be part of this channel and in my life. So um, it means a lot. And yes, I named him after Mr. T and Rocky. Say woman, say woman, say woman. Sit your old man ain't got no heart. Why don't you come down to my apartment? I show you a real man. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so in love with this little dude. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. I love you guys very, 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 very much. And we will do this again very soon, my friends. Oh, say bye. Say bye. <laughs> oh, I love you too. Give me a kiss. Oh, I love you. <laughs> bye, guys. Well, the highly anticipated Karen Reed trial gets underway next week. Both sides appeared in Norfolk Superior Court today one last time before jury selection begins. Our NBC 10's John Maroney joining us live there with new allegations from the defense. John, good evening.
Good evening, Priscilla. The judge took up a number of motions, and we did get a better idea of what the defense might be planning, along with this new charge of a cover-up. I don't have a motion from the defense to admit third-party culprit. Karen Reed's attorney say she didn't kill her boyfriend, John O'Keefe, and plan to offer another theory for his murder under the so-called third-party culprit defense. The Commonwealth is essentially asking this court to prohibit Karen Reed from being able to defend herself. Judge Beverly Canoni considered dozens of motions, including one from prosecutors wanting more details about the third-party culprit. Prosecutors say they've received no information from Reed's legal team. There have been a number of, of theories of uh, sort of uh, speculation, rank speculation, uh, opinions uh, without any evidentiary support. Can you explain to me what the process is right now? The judge was shown this video of Reed getting booked. She's accused of hitting O'Keefe, a Boston police officer, with their car and leaving him in the front yard of Brian Albert's home. The defense says O'Keefe was attacked inside the home pointing the finger of suspicion at Albert, his nephew, and a friend. We do not have to prove that Brian Albert or Colin Albert or Brian Higgins or some combination of them intended to kill John O'Keefe. The defense says Reed is being framed. They now say they have a witness who saw Canton's police chief Ken Berkowitz and Higgins examining Reed's car after the accident, except the meeting was never captured on surveillance video at the station. The video mysteriously cuts out for 42 minutes between 508 between 508 and 550 p.m. Now the judge did rule on two motions one of them would allow the prosecution to see Corey checks for potential jurors the other would bar the defense from talking about specifically the U.S. attorney's probe into this case. Well I've been Denham, John Maroney NBC 10 Boston. A last minute battle in the Karen Reed case and our first look at evidence the defense does not want jurors to see. It's a video of Reed talking with police right after she was charged with murder. Thanks for being with us on this Friday. I'm Lisa Hughes. And I'm David Wade. Prosecutors and the defense spent hours today arguing over what should be allowed in the trial and what should be kept out. Let's get right to WBZ's Christina Rex. She's live for us in Dedham tonight. And Christina, right now, this trial is scheduled to start on Tuesday. And that seems to be the plan still, David and Lisa, with everything set to start on Tuesday. Now, this pretrial hearing today was really routine, but some of the allegations we heard in the courtroom were anything but routine as we started to get a picture of what this trial might look like. Greeted by supporters, Karen Reed walks into court for the last time before her murder trial. On the agenda, 30 motions for the judge to decide whether certain evidence can be presented at trial starting next week. But the biggest what if is still undecided. Will the defense be allowed to present its theory that three other men may have killed John O'Keefe? If John O'Keefe was not hit by a car, that means that Cameron Reed did not kill him. The defense team claims three men. Brian and Colin Albert and Brian Higgins had motive and opportunity to commit the crime, including bad blood with the victim and a possible romance with Karen Reed. But in terms of being the right time period, Your Honor, you can't get any closer than their presence at the scene at the very time that John O'Keefe was killed. But prosecutors want this theory kept out of trial. That, that, that was a fanciful story. But again, there's actually no actual evidence. What they want in the trial? This body cam video of Karen Reed after her second arrest, when a grand jury indicted her for murder in June of 2022. Here's what she says. Okay, you're aware he was beaten up by Brian and Colin Albert. We're all in on the same joke, right? My tail light was cracked and John was pulverized. We saw the video at the pre-trial hearing, but will the jury get to see it at trial? These issues need to be decided in the next okay. three days. So we'll see you on Tuesday morning. And the judge will have to make all those decisions by Tuesday morning, but some of those decisions could come in as early as this evening. Now, coming up at 6, we'll give you a closer look into just how challenging jury selection will be for such a high-profile case. Live in dead, I'm Christina Rex, WBZ News. All right, Christina.
afternoon, people. Happy Saturday. Man, I hope everybody's doing well today. Seriously, I hope everybody's having a wonderful weekend. It is actually a beautiful weekend so far here in uh, Tennessee. Uh, so I'm absolutely uh, loving the weather right now. Um, this is my favorite time of year only because like it's weather's usually right where I want it when it's not raining. You know, it's usually sunny and cool. And I like that a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, and then it starts feeling like Florida, uh, which I'm not really looking forward to. But um, but uh, either way, I'm going to enjoy it. Um, yeah, people. <laughs> crazy, crazy day yesterday uh, in the Karen Reed hearing. Um, which we all watched, and thank you all again for joining me for that. Um, this was uh, <laughs> shut up, Jerry. Um, this was, yeah, I again, like, I didn't expect any like big bombshells where you know, like, my reactions are gonna be, oh my god, you know, I, I didn't really expect that to happen, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, but then it did. <laughs> that it did uh and we're going to we're going to go over that uh we're going to go over the the uh the stuff that went what that the defense uh went over yesterday which uh Twitter is talking a lot about uh and for good reason because so Brian Higgins who is uh a veteran ATF agent uh, who also is friends with Brian Albert, who also has an office inside the Canton Police Department. And Brian Albert is a veteran of the Boston Police Department. Canton Police Department, he had an office in. Brian Albert, uh, or excuse me, Brian Higgins, uh, also allegedly had a... Uh, "Quote unquote." Let's just say a, a let's let's call it a romance. Uh, to what degree, who knows? But there was definitely an interest, a mutual interest between Karen Reed and Brian Higgins, romantically at one point. Um, this would not be relevant to me at all, uh, unless <laughs> it did what it does, which is create strong motive. Uh, against Brian Higgins, if we're trying to figure out who in 34 Fairview, the night in question, which Brian Higgins was at 34 Fairview, the night in question, the night that Karen Reed allegedly struck officer, Boston police officer, John O'Keefe with her SUV and left him for dead in the cold. Now, uh, nothing tangible nothing tangible seems to implicate karen reed in this at all once you look at the evidence that the prosecution is trying to say the commonwealth of massachusetts specifically the the norfolk county da's office specifically michael morrissey's Nor norfolk da's office um is trying to say they have evidence of this evidence that they claim to have is has yet to show any type of, of of validity um at least not beyond a reasonable doubt so uh this is my concern following these types of cases um and again i gotta tell you uh i've covered a few cases here and i've never seen anything like this never ever have i ever seen a case like this uh so Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is really mind blowing to me. Um, because I remember going into this case and feeling like, well, okay, the problem with all of these theories, you want to point fingers and I'm talking about turtle boy, turtle riders, I'm talking about everybody who 
uh, who were screaming, Karen Reed is innocent, Karen Reed is innocent, months ago when I started following this case. And my problem with that at the time, if you remember correctly, was, well, who has motive? Because I was like, well, you know, okay, well, that's great. Um, I, I could see that there's a lot wrong with this investigation. And uh, as if I'm looking at this in the eyes of a juror and with the evidence that's been made available to me, I'm going to say Karen Reed is absolutely innocent. Uh, I believe her to be innocent. Uh, and, but the problem that I had with that though, is, well, if I'm going, somebody had to be responsible for John O'Keefe's death. If Karen Reed wasn't, somebody had to be, and I'm not going to start pointing fingers at people, uh, specifically without motive. And the closest thing besides that, and the, the Higgins thing, I only called it months ago, just, just, just a couple of months ago, maybe, maybe, um, I only called it once. Grant and all these other idiots started screaming and yelling about how Karen Reed had motive because she was having an affair with Brian Higgins. And my argument the entire time was, well, that just gives Higgins more motive. He was inside the house. Karen Reed is none of the facts indicate that Karen Reed actually did anything here. Um, and, and her texting and leaving voicemail saying, I hate you. And them even having problems as a couple is not nearly enough for me to accuse someone of murder, uh, or even say that that's strong enough motive. Um, now I did, while I was trying to explore this theory, uh, well, while I was trying to explore who would have had motive inside 34 Fairview, the closest thing that I could come up with, and I meant it very loosely, and I still haven't even completely let this go. Uh, the only reason that I'm, that, 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 that I, I haven't even completely, the only reason that I, uh, that I'm, uh, I guess, you know, uh, not putting as much stock into it uh, is because of everything that the defense has been saying uh, and all of everything that they're saying comes from this TUI report that is that basically consists of the findings of the federal investigation that has taken place in, into this investigation. So for those of you who aren't aware, um, which I don't imagine many of you at all, if any are not aware, but the Norfolk County DA's office that is prosecuting this case is currently under federal investigation via the United States Attorney's Office, via Josh Levy specifically, who is the uh, very good looking man that is uh, featured on my thumbnail. Um, not the one with his back facing, looking like he's handcuffed uh, conveniently. And thanks to uh, Turtle Boy's uh, reporting that I was able to get that screenshot and manipulate it and make it look like Brian Higgins might be in handcuffs. Uh, you see how I can do that? I, I can do the dramatic stuff too, y'all. They, they, I can make clickbait thumbnails and they, 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 anyway. Um, but yeah, so Josh Levy is, uh, is heading up an investigation, uh, that he would be prosecuting if there are indictments to get, that are going to be handed down, but I don't expect federal indictments to be handed out for John O'Keefe's actual murder. Uh, I think that what's going to happen is they're they're going to uncover a certain amount of of evidence. Uh, I think that what's going to happen is they are going to they are currently right now Josh Levy and everyone working with Josh Levy and all of the resources that he has at his disposable at disposable at his disposal uh, right now. Uh, I believe that those people. Um, I believe that that what he's trying to do right now is build a case against Michael Morrissey and any of his subordinates. Um, and that's what the U.S. attorney's uh, office is focused on right now. Um, now. The. Yeah, sorry, I was a little distracted by chat. 
Um, now the the U.S. Attorney's Office, um, the the they're going to, like I said, build a do do everything they can to build a case. This is why indictments have not been handed out. Everybody's going, oh, well, well where are the indictments? Where are the indictments? U.S. Attorney's Office is awful quiet. Feds are awfully quiet. Blah, 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 blah. Dude, okay. Yeah, that's because <laughs> there's a reason why they have a, I, I think it's like a something like a 98 or 99% uh, success rate when it comes to prosecuting cases. I'd say it's because they are very careful in how they collect the evidence and then how they present the evidence. And they want to make sure that they have enough evidence. A strong case. In order to get justice, a strong case should be able to prove itself. It shouldn't require any lawyer tricks. It shouldn't require any double talk or word salad coming from one of the attorneys. It should not. It should just simply be, look at the evidence. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, look at the evidence. The evidence doesn't lie. And I believe that that is exactly what the U.S. Attorney's Office is uh, is in the habit of doing. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, I, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, and for you limeys out there now, I know that the 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 title people are like grass. What's a grass? That's why I pinned it at the top of the comment. Uh, section here uh, in the top of the um, the chat here. Uh, <laughs> uh, grass is is limey talk for rat or snitch um, because this is where I'm at. Um, I did not believe. I do not believe that. Um, Currently, I do not believe that Josh Levy or Josh Levy, sorry, that Brian Higgins is a grass. I do not believe that. Um, but I'm starting to. And so I thought that we could explore that together the same way that we explored me getting familiar with this case together. Um, we're going to explore that together today. Uh, so. Um, I'm going to start off by playing um, Brian Higgins' attorney. It was just a few hearings ago. Uh, Brian Higgins' attorney addresses the court of Beverly Canoni. Um, and this is uh, this is due to the, the the findings in the in the in the federal investigation. Um, and so. We're going to hear from from Josh Higgins attorney here, and I want to pay a little closer attention to it now, having known uh, knowing now what we know uh, in regards to Brian Higgins. Um, now, again, the theory that, that I was getting uh, that, that I got distracted on theory that I was that I was getting to what made the most sense to me at the time looking for someone with motive would have been Matt McCabe. And if you remember the first time I spoke with Turtle Boy, uh, I had him here on this panel. And the first time we spoke, uh, I shared this with him. And he was he was totally just like, nah, man, nah, dude. Like, if you met this guy, you know. <laughs> and and I was like, fair enough, you know, because I, I never fucking walked up to Matt McCabe, stuck a phone in his face and stuck a phone in his wife's face. And saw what he was made of. And <laughs> Turtle Boy saw what he was made of. And apparently he wasn't made of much. Uh, and <laughs> this is not exactly the type of person whose personality meshes with the type of person that it would take to do what was done to uh, Officer John O'Keefe. So, um, yeah. Uh, but... The thing is, though, Brian Higgins definitely, definitely falls under that category of the type of person who could be capable of doing that to John O'Keefe. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah. All right, so council, I need you to spell your name for me, please. Yes, Your Honor, the last name is Connolly, C-O-N-N-O-L-L-Y. And what's your first name? A William. Thank you. All right, I will hear you on behalf of Mr. Higgins. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Your Honor, as the court is aware, Brian Higgins' phone records and- William, pussy ass name. Communications are at issue in these motions. Um, Brian Higgins is a federal ATF agent. He is a witness in the Commonwealth's prosecution of this case. And he has cooperated fully in the Commonwealth's investigation. As this court knows, we've not had the benefit of seeing the factual support for these motions, but I wanna provide some information that likely isn't contained within those materials submitted to the court. Okay, I don't know who Jill Daniels is. Um, so many fucking names in this case. Uh, I don't know who Jill Daniels is. Um, but of which I have a good faith basis to believe is information contained in the materials provided by the federal government to the parties in this case. I have represented Brian Higgins since April of 2023, the month when he received the federal grand jury subpoena. Like he has in this case, Brian has cooperated. Yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, exactly, Benjamin John. That's funny because my name is William Bradford. By the way, guys, just so you know, it's my name. William Bradford. <laughs> fully with the federal investigation. He has answered every question put to him in both investigations, and he will continue to do so because he has nothing to hide. Brian Higgins is not a target of the federal investigation. That has been confirmed by the United States Attorney's Office and confirmed to me that I could make that representation in court. The U.S. Attorney's Wait, Office- Wait, what? Continuously confirmed Wait, me. you're telling me Jill Daniels is Jennifer McCabe's sister and Jennifer McCabe in a clip said maybe Higgins did it? Get the fuck out of my face. I, dude, no fucking way. You're lying. And you're a piece of shit. I don't think you're a piece of shit, but McGruber says you're lying. You're lying. I got to see this. I got to know. I got to know. Throughout its investigation, that Brian Higgins is not a target of their investigation. Brian Higgins has not participated in any kind of a cover-up or conspiracy to cover up the criminal activity of others. Brian has spent his career saving lives. He was a fire. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, hold on. Answered every question put to him in both invest fully with the federal investigation. He has answered every in those materials submitted to the court, um, but of which I have a good faith basis to believe is information contained in the materials provided by the federal government to the parties in this case. I have represented Brian Higgins since April of 2023, the month when he received the federal grand jury subpoena, like he has in this case, Brian has cooperated fully with the federal investigation. Now, for those of you that are saying, okay, oh my God, he lawyered up as soon as he got a, fed, uh, a, a federal subpoena. You better fucking believe the second that I get a federal subpoena, I don't give a shit what it's about. I'm lawyering the fuck up. I don't give a shit what it's about. I don't give a shit if I did anything, didn't do anything. Look at, dude. Karen Reed right now is exactly an example, is the perfect example that even if you are innocent, you lawyer the fuck up. And I mean quick. Like if you have the means to, to get the best possible attorney, you lawyer the fuck up because look at what's happening to Karen Reed right now. Imagine if she didn't have representation. Just imagine if Karen Reed did not have lawyers like Jackson and Yanetti. I mean, just close your eyes and imagine it for a moment. She would be fucked. She'd be in prison right now. This would have been over. She'd be in prison right now. Some dickhead public defender that works for Norfolk, Norfolk County. Okay, <laughs> some 
some dipshit public defender would have would have talked her into a plea deal and she would have taken a plea deal sitting in jail innocent as fuck don't ever 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 talk to a cop under circumstances that even remotely suggest something like this don't ever talk to a cop without representation ever 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 and he has answered every question put to him in both investigations and he will continue to do so because he has nothing to hide brian higgins is not a target of the federal investigation that has been confirmed by the united states attorney's office and confirmed to me that i could make that representation in court the US okay so this is interesting uh, uh, oh my goodness, no. I guess it's not that early. I think we got a super dad. Super dad. I think we got a super dad. Super dad. Super dad. Super dad. I think we got a super dad. I think we got a super dad. <laughs> uh, let me read this comment here because this is this is actually a really good comment. Um, ask Bob, uh, ask Bob. Okay. Ask Bob. You're saying Karen is innocent. I worry about the kids on the stand, how they have been brainwashed and juries being sympathetic to kids. I'm glad you brought this up. Um, because the easy answer that I would normally give on, on something like this is they'll never call the kids to the stand. That's that's the easy answer right there. The quickest answer that I could that that I could spit out right here as far as that comment goes is they'll never call the kids to the stand. Um, but the thing is, though, and, and the reason being is for the reasons that you just named. You don't want to traumatize these kids, depending on how old they are. Um, you don't want to traumatize these kids uh, and you don't want them to have some sort of meltdown in front of the jury. Uh, and you definitely do not want to look like you are being insensitive to these children either side whether it be the prosecution or the defense you do not want to look like you're abusing kids by badgering them with questions while they're on the stand you don't even want to take that chance so they try to avoid uh putting kids on the stand but here's the thing <laughs> like i said that's the easy answer here's the thing though <laughs> Everything that the prosecution has done in this case so far fucking boggles me. I, I, I have no idea. See what I mean? Don B is right there with me. Lolly's dumbass, Will. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Will this dickhead? And, and, and again, he's only following orders from Michael Morrissey. Would Michael Morrissey be stupid enough to fucking put those kids on the stand? Absolutely. Is Michael Morrissey uh, ignorant enough to, to, to just completely lack any type of empathy for children altogether? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. I mean, the, we're talking like if they get desperate enough, and they will get desperate enough. They will. They, they have no case against Karen Reed. I am convinced absolutely, completely at this point that the prosecution, the Norfolk County DA's office, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has absolutely no case that is tangible against Karen Reed. Karen Reed. Oh, and Scott. Wow. Thank you so much for the Venmo, man. You get, I don't normally do super chat dances for Venmo, but this is extremely generous. And I appreciate that. Scott, thank you so much. I think we got a super chat. Super chat. I think we got a super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. We got a super chat. <laughs> yeah, so um, I know I can't highlight it because it was a Venmo, uh, but uh, someone named Scott. Uh, I don't know which Scott it was. Um, I don't like to say last names because sometimes this these Venmo or Cash App accounts, you know, or PayPal accounts, they contain personal information. I don't like to share their uh, full on information here, so. Um, so whichever Scott that was, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, the thing is, is I, I, I have no, 
no idea. Um, I have no idea if the Commonwealth plans on. Uh, thank you, Cherry. I appreciate it. Uh, I have no idea if the Commonwealth plans on. Uh, uh, dro- uh, putting uh, J- John O'Keefe's kids on the stand uh, because that's. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, that would not be a good look in this climate. As far as like public opinion goes, that is such a bad move. And we know, especially the fact that we know how concerned Michael Morrissey is with the court of public opinion. I mean, he is very, very concerned with how the public sees this case. We know so because of how many different examples do we have of, uh, and speak of the devil being one of those examples. Welcome, Turtle Boy. It's good to see you, buddy. Um, you think you think they'll do it? <laughs> He's like, they're one hundred percent gonna do it. Okay, all right. Um, but the thing is, is somebody who's okay. How do we know that Michael Morrissey is fully so concerned with his image in the public? Well, a he had he felt the need to get in front of everything and make this ridiculously public statement, which only hurt the prosecution's case, ultimately, uh, but had to make this public statement to the whole world that was unprecedented, but had to make this whole this statement in front of the whole world in regards to... Um, in regards to uh, uh, the, the, the harassment. The harassment and the, uh, and, 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 and the intimidation... It, it, it needs to stop. It needs to stop. I'm trying to like imitate having like eight chins. It needs to stop. Um, so Michael Morrissey, I mean, there's that. Then there's the fact that the Norfolk County DA's office under his behest, uh, because he he hired Ken Mello, a special prosecutor, uh, absolutely for special reasons. And those special reasons is to arrest, charge, and to indict, charge, and arrest Turtle Boy with witness intimidation and with uh, harassment and picketing and conspiracy and whatever, what other other bullshit uh, that he that he decided to uh, to try to convince the public. Uh, to use to comp- convince the public that Turtle Boy is a public menace and must be stopped. He's got to be stopped. So you put Turtle Boy in jail for 60 days. And uh, then the Commonwealth just files every motion under the sun that <laughs> surrounds that surrounds the idea of keeping and 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 keeping control of the public narrative uh everything seems to be the motive of keeping control of the public narrative uh so everything michael morrissey does and and as a matter of fact it seems as though michael morrissey's concern <laughs> if we do look at the tactics here michael morrissey seems more concerned with the court of public opinion than the court of law. He seems more concerned with controlling the narrative in the public eye than actually effectively prosecuting Karen Reed, which I find incredibly interesting. I've never seen that shit before in my life, but I also find it very telling. I find it extremely telling that not a prosecutor, not not a paralegal, not a clerk. No, 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 no. The Norfolk County DA is concerned more with his image to the public than getting justice for a fallen police officer. I mean, why does nobody see this? Like, it, it, all you got to do is just step back. Like, it's really funny because we're watching Plevin right now 
Plevin is Plevin Plevin's staring at the uh because it, it really shouldn't be that, but for Plevin it is. Maybe it's just his eyes. But for Plevin, Plevin is staring into the 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 magic picture hanging at the doctor's office. He's staring at the magic picture. Uh-huh. Like an asshole. This whole time going, I don't see anything but a bunch of blah, 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 created by the defense. Just a whole bunch of, I, I see nothing. But now, Plevin got a glimpse. Plevin got a little glimpse of the sailboat. There's a sailboat in this picture. And it's in 3D. And Plevin blinked and saw it and went... And now Plevin's at that phase where he's staring at that picture at the doc doctor's office. And he's like, I know I saw it. Hold on. I got to keep. Come on. Come on. Come on. So he's getting there. Plevin, we're waiting for you, buddy. We're waiting for you. We're waiting for you. Don't worry. Nobody's going anywhere. I, I can't get over the people in this like following this case and the way they think dude like i just can't get over it it's just so funny to me um but yes um this gentleman here is stating that there's that brian higgins is not subject he is not a suspect and he's not being he's not subject to the investigation he is not uh, a target of the investigation. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. I think we got a super cat. Okay, thank you so much, Scott McGinnis. I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, the Commonwealth prosecution is based on getting a jury to buy into the Mean Girls drama and prejudice the jury. A shell game, smoke and mirrors, garbage. Um, yeah, agreed. Yeah, this whole whatever the fuck her name is. I don't even know her name. I don't care what her name is. I don't give a shit. That's, what's really funny about that is nobody gives a fuck. This is also very telling. Um nobody gives a fuck like because if if these people like let's say these 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 the 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 free karen reed mob right are are these dangerous people that are just in this for the drama and blah 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 gerda k gifted a membership congrats to ruth hurdle thank you so much ruth hurdle welcome to logic appreciate you um if uh yeah this 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 angry mob people we've got a We've got an angry mob who's only focused on the drama, right? Well, if that were the case, I mean, who, whatever the fuck this lady's name would be getting the same kind of shit all over social media the way that Dylan Mortensen did from uh, the Idaho case. So, I mean, that's just not the case. Nobody gives a fuck about these people. You know why nobody gives a fuck about these people? Because we're only interested in justice. And because her statement is coming through a third party. It's hearsay on top of hearsay. Nobody gives a fuck if this lady says that Karen Reed was kissing somebody or John O'Keefe was kissing her or whoever she is. Nobody gives a fuck about that lady. Nobody gives a fuck about her friend. Nobody gives a fuck about any of these people other than whoever could have absolutely had something to do with John O'Keefe's death. But these people don't have, I mean, I don't I don't suspect none of these people. They weren't there at 34 Fairview that night. I don't give a fuck who they are. I don't give a fuck who uh, John O'Keefe was making out with. I don't give a fuck who Karen Reed was making out with. Unless <laughs> it turns out that they have motive, means, and opportunity. That's a different story. But just making out with somebody, that's not motive for anything. It's not motive for anything. But yes, this gentleman is saying the truth. He's saying that John or that Brian Higgins, Brian Higgins is not 
a target of this investigation, of the federal investigation. I agree. I don't think he is either. I think at one point he might have been. But I kept asking myself, why isn't he? Why wouldn't he be? Because he is a he, he is a federal investigator, is he not? Is he not someone who works for the feds? So I wonder, I wonder uh, if, like I said before, I think I talked about this before, like you have like the, the, the JAG, like that show JAG where they just handle inside military is, is does the same work for the FBI? I think so. Otherwise internal affairs, the, <laughs> the title of this particular department within the department is internal affairs, which means that it handles affairs that are involved in it with internal issues, uh, internal issues, you know, uh, affairs that are internal. So therefore, if there is a dirty cop, then that department has a part of it, uh, a section of it that handles a dirty cop, right? So I would assume that if he's under federal investigation, he's under some kind of federal investigation. But if he's a suspect some way, at some in some way, shape, or form at this point when it comes to John O'Keefe's death, if he is a suspect, and I am emphasizing the word if, because I, I don't know, but if he is a suspect, he's not a suspect of this. He's not a target of this particular investigation. We have to keep, keep our eyes on the ball, folks, okay? Keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the three-card Monty. Keep your eye on the right card, okay? The federal investigation in question here is the federal investigation into the investigation, not into the incident in question, but the investigation into the incident in question. So it doesn't seem, I don't see how Brian Higgins would be a target of that investigation, seeing he as he was not assigned any role in investigating the death of John O'Keefe. So, um, I believe if I had to guess, if I'm speculating, I would have to, I would believe that, that I, I'm to believe that Michael Proctor is, was absolutely a target of the federal investigation. Because I don't see his attorney standing up there saying that he's not. So um, Michael Proctor being a a target of the federal investigation, I could see the Massachusetts State Police stepping up and saying, hey, 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 no, 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 fuck you, feds. He's one of ours. We'll take care of it. We'll investigate him. Uh, and And that is a good move. That's a good move if the feds or if the Massachusetts State Police want to make sure to separate their department as an entity from Michael Proctor's actions. Uh, so it's a good move in that. But it's also a good move if they want to attempt to try to cover up what he's done uh, in order to save face. Because I promise you that this is not about the Massachusetts State Police protecting their own. It's about the Massachusetts State Police protecting their image. And it's important that they do. Don't get me wrong. We need to have faith in our police. This is very, very important. So um, as far as Michael Proctor's investigation goes, it is being internally done. And I don't have a lot of faith in that. <laughs> if I'm being totally honest, I sure as shit do not have a lot of faith in it. But it is what it is. And we're just going to have to accept it for now. It, it, it just is what it is. Now, um. Targets of the federal investigation would not be people who think that jo that, that we might think could have killed John O'Keefe. They are the people who might be involved in covering up the murder in, of John O'Keefe who are in a law enforcement position. That's who would be target to this federal investigation.
I'm a baffled says question. I really listened to this today. Do I understand correctly that uh, BBB won't allow Fed evidence or did I um, misunderstand? Um, I no, I maybe now you got me questioning it. Uh, so I don't know. Um, but I don't think that's the case. If I understand it correctly, as I understand it, um, somebody had me questioning this yesterday, but uh, maybe we'll watch it again uh, just to see. Um, but as I understand it, she said that they can't, the defense can't use that as, they can't basically weaponize the federal investigation uh, to exonerate Karen Reed. They're saying that if it comes up, if 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 a question comes up and a witness refers to the federal investigation, the cat's out of the bag. And that's it. Once that's done, then it's done. But you, but the defense can't like bring it up in opening arguments going, they're under federal investigation. The prosecution is under federal investigation. You know what I mean? Um, so I kind of understand. Um I kind of understand that. To me, that makes sense. To me, that absolutely makes sense. Um, um, it's not. I, I again, I I have to speculate. I'm not a lawyer, but I'd have to speculate, Paul Ward, because that's that's a good point. Is that not evidence? Is it not evidence that the that the that the Commonwealth, that the Norfolk County DA's office is is under federal investigation? Is that not evidence? Um. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, we're talking about you have to look at the you, you have to again keep your eye on the ball here. This is this is a trial for a woman who killed a cop. The prosecution's not on trial here. You see what I'm saying? So you you the judge is not going to allow just attacks on this, but if the federal investigation becomes naturally through its own course of uncovering things in this case through trial well then yes that's going to it, it's it's going to have something to do with the case for sure and if that comes out it comes out it can't be hidden from the jury but the thing is 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 you can't just in opening statements where a woman is on trial for killing her boyfriend who happened to be a boston police officer you can't just go well the prosecution and the DA's office is 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 under investigation. You start pointing fingers at them, that just looks like you're attacking the other side without, you know. And plus, we don't have nobody's been convicted, nobody's been charged, nobody's been convicted. So you can't just throw that shit in front of a jury and expect the judge to be okay with, with that being used. Um so. Yeah, I mean, technically, um, well, not technically, not technically, it's evidence. Technically, it's not evidence, not in this case. But it's going to come up. I mean, <laughs> first of all, we're talking about Jackson and Yanetti here. Like these dudes, they'll find a way to make sure that comes up for sure. There's there's no there, there's this is they're they're planning on using the findings from this investigation. And that's going to happen. Like, I mean, think about that. Some of the very people that the prosecution are planning on bringing up to the stand, some of the very people that the prosecution are bringing up to testify are people who are mentioned in this TUI report. So, absolutely, the, the, the defense through cross-examination is going to ask questions to these, to these uh, witnesses that that pertain to the, to, to the TUI report. So that that's, that's just going to happen. Um, there's just no way that you're going to get two guys like Jackson and Yanetti. And from what I'm seeing, um, uh, okay, sorry. Um, Yanetti's daughter as well being involved and doing as well as she is because she's killing it. Um, and, and I love her energy by the way, because I, I love how people were, were, were saying things like, 
oh, she's she's so nervous. Look at the poor little little fawn, the little babe in the woods. No, man. This this young woman is fire. She's passionate. She's fresh. She's still got the mindset of that attorney who just started and wants to change the world. And that's exactly what a case like this needs. That's exactly, oh, Yanetti's sister. I can't believe I said daughters, excuse me. Um, Yanetti's sister. And yeah, why would I say daughter? I don't know why I said daughter. Um, it's just, words just get mixed up as you've noticed. I've been doing it all night. I do it every time I do a stream. Uh, excuse me, sorry about that. But it is important to correct. Um, but yeah, like you can tell. Like, that's exactly what this case needs. This case right now needs passionate people about the who are passionate about the law, who are passionate about justice, who are passionate about playing a role in, in getting justice. Can you imagine what it's like to be an attorney, like morally, to be a defense attorney who's a good person, who has a family at home? And you have to defend people who you know in your heart are fucking guilty. And you could possibly get them acquitted of murder. And if you're a good person, there's no way you're not going to lose sleep over that. You know what I mean? You dream. You dream of a case like this. You dream of being able, and it's not because it's high profile. You dream of a case like this when... You're a good person who has to do a, 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 a difficult job for a good person to do. Because, yes, are some defense attorneys and prosecutors, are they shitty fucking people? Is there a reason why it's a cliche to make lawyer jokes since the fucking 70s? I mean, there's a reason for this. People don't like fucking lawyers because lawyers have to put their morals aside to do their job. This is it's an important part of the process. And so people just don't fucking like lawyers. You know, I don't like lawyers. I don't like lawyers because they're fucking blood suckers. <laughs> you motherfuckers charge too much money. Like crazy, crazy. Dude, my last lawyer charged $75 per email, dude. I just wasn't even like that expensive of a lawyer. $75 per email. Whether I sent one or got one, $75. That's not a phone call. Imagine what that costs. That's time. Fuck lawyers. <laughs> but we need them, you know. But <laughs> I guess I just get pissed. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I hate what they charge. That's my issue with lawyers. I hate what they charge. That's my issue. Um, Dude, even Melanie Little hates lawyers. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Even Melody Little will tell you. She's a recovering lawyer. She calls herself a fucking recovering lawyer. What do you what do you what do you think? Even Melody Little, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. She agrees. Most lawyers who are listening to me right now probably agree with me. Um so <laughs> so anyway, um I forgot where I was at talking about this. Um I'm saying, okay, no, I remember now. Uh, I'm saying it's got to be exciting for a defense attorney who has strong moral values. Um, it's got to be a dream come true for them to, to get to actually pursue truth and justice for someone who is innocent and falsely accused of a crime. And, and I'm talking like, using the law to take on a very, very powerful entity. And that powerful entity is, make no mistake, the Norfolk County DA's office could very well be the fucking state of Massachusetts. I mean, the entire, I mean, th that is that is crazy. So this is a dream come true. Because Karen Reed is the little guy here. John O'Keefe is the victim. But now there are two victims in this case. 
because Karen Reed is the little guy. And the little guy needs somebody to stand up and fight. And Jackson and Yanetti, they're 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 the tough guys on the block. You know what I mean? They're the tough guys on the block, and they see bullying, and they're just like, dude, you know what? Fuck that shit. Now, that's not to imply that Karen Reed is timid. Karen Reed was ready to fight, but she knew what it took to fight, and she needed a couple of tough guys on the block. So she hired him. It's a smart thing to do. It's the only thing to do. What else are you going to do in a situation like that? What else are you going to do in a situation like that? So people were saying that Yanetti's sister, excuse me, that Miss Yanetti was, was, timid and and you know like a, like like i said like a fawn like a babe in the woods nervous you know and and yanetti's just sitting up there going you got this don't worry you know chucks her on the chin no bro that young woman was on fire she was angry her voice was shaking because she was passionate about what she was talking about she was pissed off Because most lawyers, I would imagine, go their entire careers without, like, without ever seeing anything that she's seeing on paper and going, how in the fuck are we here? How in the fuck are we even here? Where this is going to trial? How in the fuck are we even here? For someone young, green, to be... One of our first cases? Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. No, man. You guys got me all confused in the chat. I'll correct it later. It's not that fucking big of a deal. Um, <laughs> if I'm getting names confused. It is not that serious if I'm getting names confused, but I'm not going to waste my life going over it and trying to correct it. I will correct it, I promise, and then I will go over it later. But we have a lot to go over and only so much time, and I'd like to stay on task. But I appreciate you guys trying to help me, but I'm getting different things, and I'm not going to worry about the names that I'm screwing up here. Um. So, now, um, the point being, Karen Reed's team is the perfect team for her to have right now. Right now, Karen Reed's defense team is the perfect team for her to have right now. She has exactly the lawyers that she needs for this kind of fight. And how do we know this? Because they are bringing up, they have been digging up things that are absolutely vital to proving what's necessary here. Because all of this stuff goes on record. Remember, and as 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 David Unetti said when he was talking uh, in this last hearing, he was saying, I, it's not my, it's not our job. To prove that Brian Higgins killed John O'Keefe or that Brian Albert killed John O'Keefe or that somebody else killed John O'Keefe. That's not our job. Our job is to prove that Karen Reed didn't do it. That's their job. And that's exactly the extent of what their job is. Yet they are going above and beyond. Because I find it very interesting that they seem to be the only people who are interested in getting justice. The only people who are interested in getting actual justice. Their actions are dictating this. If you're just judging by the actions of every party involved, the only people that seem to have any, as far as the, 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 as far as the core officers are concerned, 
The only people that seem concerned with justice for John O'Keefe through their actions are Karen Reed and her defense team. That's it. I mean, yeah, this this dude is uh this Higgins dude is killing me right now. The U.S. Attorney's Office has continuously confirmed throughout its investigation that Brian Higgins is not a target of their investigation. Brian Higgins has not participated in any kind of a cover-up or conspiracy to cover up the criminal activity of others. Brian has... Okay, see, now that's where things get tricky. Okay? He didn't try to cover anything up. I guarantee you that he did. Now... Through a, a, a technical detail, maybe he could argue that he didn't. But, I mean, uh, it's possible. It's possible that they were just like the, the phone calls that happened between Brian Albert and Brian Higgins. Uh, very possible that they were just like, well, uh, listen, Higgins, you just lay low. We'll take care of everything. I know people. I've got the resources. We'll get this taken care of. I know the lead investigator who's going to be taking care of it. I know this person. I know that person. It's all good. Don't you worry about it. Get I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. 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 Hayden Kane, thank you. If the car didn't hit, you must acquit. Agreed. Absolutely. I mean, that's what it boils down to. Thank you for that, Hayden. Because what that boils down to is if they're saying Karen Reed hit him with the car and the car didn't hit John O'Keefe, Karen Reed didn't hit him with the car, which means Karen Reed did not kill John O'Keefe, which means Karen Reed is absolutely and factually innocent. has spent his career saving lives. He was a firefighter before becoming an ATF agent. He's been an EMT. Now, all of these things, like Higgins' resume, impressive. And I won't take away from that stuff. As a matter of fact, no matter what I find out, I'm going to say that I'm grateful to him for all of the things that he's done that are good with his career in law enforcement. And as a first responder, sure, great, awesome. Thank you for that. But you know what? It kind of sucks that much more if you're that kind of guy and the world needs people like you, more people like you, and you piss it away by killing some dude over jealousy of a woman and then lie about it and cover it up. I mean... You're held to a higher standard than that, man. Because all the tools that it takes to be a dope-ass law enforcement agent, I mean, without without the, the, the convictions of a good person, none of that means anything. That just makes you a fucking thug. Good things done by a thug. You know what I mean? You're not one of the good guys. You're not one of the good guys. Not if you are doing these things and you could do some. If you're so capable of doing something at that petty and shitty and taking someone someone's life over it, a man who also served, you don't, I mean, every good thing that you've done means shit now because it was done by a fucking a, a, a shit bag thug. And that's if he actually did this. I'm not saying he did. But I'm saying makes a lot of sense. That's all I'm saying. Since 1992, he received a Congressional Medal for saving the life of a fellow ATF task force officer 
um, after being shot five times in Somerville, Massachusetts. He has served our military in Iraq. Participating in a cover-up is contrary to who he is as a human being in a professional. I am here to represent Brian's interest. In and I completely agree. That's basically in a nutshell what I just said. Because these things that he, this, this person that he's describing is absolutely contrary to somebody who would do something like this. Absolutely contrary to that. Which means to me that all these things that you're naming mean shit. If it was a shit bag, who did it? In privacy, Brian Higgins at my urging um, will not capitulate and stand down when efforts are made to further intrude upon his privacy based upon sheer speculation. It is for that reason that we oppose these motions, not because Brian Higgins has done something wrong or has anything to hide. We know this court will give us an opportunity to review the motions and supplement our remarks if we, if we deem it necessary. We know this court will fairly weigh the arguments before it and will render- Now, let's just say, for argument's sake, Brian Higgins killed John O'Keefe for the reasons that Jackson and Yanetti or David Yanetti said so. I think we got a super chat, super bad. I think we got a super chat, super bad. Super chat, super bad, bad, bad. We got a super chat. <laughs> Miss Bell, thank you so much. Internal affairs. We investigated and found we did nothing wrong. Right. <laughs> Good point. Thank you so much. Um, now, let's just say for the sake of argument that Brian Higgins killed John O'Keefe, right? Um, and let's just say for the sake of argument that the phone records that his attorney, which is his job to do, uh, uh, and is trying to, which is his job to do to try to prevent these phone records from being public and being seen. Um, what let's just say those things contain all the incriminating evidence that not only would exonerate Karen Reed, but implicate him and anyone else involved, right? Let's just say that that's the case. And you might be asking, well, that would make this lawyer a liar, right? Well, not legally speaking, no. <laughs> not in the eyes of the law, because at no point here where this gentleman right here is speaking at no point does he say i am aware of what's on those phone records and i'm telling you that there's nothing on them that is incriminating to my client see what i'm saying he's just saying there's nothing so he could say well that's what my client told me it's my job to represent my client you know so he could just he, he he's not lying <laughs> you know what i mean he could say, I don't even know what's on the phone records. I'm here to protect the privacy of my client. Privacy means not even me. He's he's a private guy. And he hired me to protect his privacy. And that's what I'm here to do. So this does not mean this lawyer using lawyer talk. He's not saying that Brian Higgins doesn't have incriminating stuff on his phone he's saying that it doesn't sound like he would because of how much of a per of how good of a person he is and how strong of a career he's had in helping people this is not what somebody would have see what i'm saying so you're not gonna like you you're you're you, you can sit here and be like i wonder if this lawyer is lying or not I, I, I'm going to say he's not lying. I'm going to say he just doesn't know what the fuck those phones are. Or at least that's what he's going to hide behind and say. But this has nothing to do with nothing. This has nothing to do with whether or not he killed John O'Keefe. This is about him trying to make sure that nobody finds out if that is the case. But his lawyer is only doing 
his lawyer's job, which is going, he has a right to privacy and he's not a target of the federal investigation, which these, which what we're talking about are the federal investigation's findings. Since he's not a target of the federal investigation, which he's not, then then he has a right to his privacy. There's no reason why in a murder case, unrelated, or, you know, six degrees of Kevin Bacon related, um, it, it, in a murder case that's not directly related, his privacy should be blasted all over the world, especially if he's not been charged with a crime or named a suspect in a crime. Well, then, no. You don't get to have his phone records. You don't get to publicly show that shit. You don't get to publicly use it. Under a fair decision, and we will respect that decision, and we will comply with that decision. Respectfully, we do not believe there is a sufficient factual basis to support the relief requested in the motions before the court. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you very much. We do not believe. Okay. Now... Now, let me read something here. Somebody posted something that was really interesting. This is a Twitter user named Dag Nabbit. And they posted something that got me thinking. Okay. Um, and they go by at Lamplighter 6, 1630. Uh, and Dag Nabbit says, Higgins is the key. Brian Higgins is a veteran federal law enforcement agent with the ATF Boston. After yesterday's blockbuster hearing in the case of Karen Reed, we now know that Higgins is the key to how the murder of Boston police officer John O'Keefe happened. And more significantly, he is the key to how the case will end. Uh, did Reed's defense attorney, David Yannetti, accidentally on purpose let slip in court yesterday that Higgins might be facing criminal charges of his own when he described Higgins' interview with the feds as a proffer. A proffer is a promise of immunity or reduced charges to a witness or suspect in exchange for their cooperation in a federal investigation. Lawyers don't use loaded terms like proffer casually or by accident. Message received, Boston Defender. Okay. Uh, it goes on, uh, and I'll keep reading, but I want to, I, I, I need to do something here. Okay. Okay, so what it explains when I Google it is a proffer is a mechanism to offer or present evidence at trial ooh, for immediate acceptance or rejection. Huh. So an offer to present evidence. So, I mean, I could see why people are going, okay, now I now I have to hear Yanetti's, Yanetti explaining this. Um, because this is very, very interesting to me. I have to hear Yanetti say that. Again, thank you for your patience, guys. Again, this this that's why there's a question mark at the end of the title. I like to explore these things with you guys. So uh, what we're doing here is we're looking for answers, folks. Okay, that's... Oh, that's the lolly thing. 
Okay, let's. Sorry, I got to get to you, Nettie's. All right, here we go. I just got to hear you, Nettie's use of the term. A call from Chief Kenneth Berkowitz earlier. Um, immediately after getting off the phone with Brian Albert, Brian Higgins drives back to 34 Fairview where he has a meeting with uh, just about all the witnesses in this case, Brian Albert, Julie Albert, Jennifer McCabe, Matthew McCabe. And immediately after that friends and family meeting on his day off, which is a Saturday, he returns to the Canton Police Department where he speaks with all of the first responding officers who had anything to do with this case. So this is a quote unquote witness accessing and communicating with all the first responding officers, we would argue monitoring what they're doing in regard to the investigation. According to Brian Higgins, he admitted that Chief Berkowitz is one of his best friends and that's why he had access to all these people. We have Okay, sorry about that, folks. Um, had a little bit of a technical difficulty there. Um, yeah, I lost the thing. There was a brought up something up from a separate case and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But um, now I just, I have to, I, I had to stop there for a second uh, because I had to look up what, what a federal proffer is because it is different. Federal proffer is an agreement is a written contract between a federal prosecutor and a defendant or a person under criminal investigation where the defendant agrees to provide the prosecutor with useful information. Now, this is very, very interesting. This changes things. Now I have to keep listening to see what context, um, what context David Yanetti said the word proffer these people we have a law enforcement witness who will testify to seeing chief kenneth berkowitz and brian higgins alone with karen reed's vehicle on the afternoon of january 29th of 2022 for quote a wildly long time so is this a name that's been in the materials is it is this a name known to the commonwealth or yes is this somebody know okay we and we've now received video surveillance from the canton police department that shows that there is an interior camera in the sally port garage where the car was housed but in during the exact time that that third party officer indicates that Berkowitz and Higgins were in the Sally port together, the video mysteriously cuts out for 42 minutes between 508, between 508 and 550 PM. And just to be clear here, we never get to see the condition of the taillight when it's brought into the garage. When we do see the car, we see it after Brian Higgins, Chief Berkowitz, Michael Proctor, and Yuri Buchnik have all had access to it. At 5.36 p.m., the car pings that it's arrived in the Sally Port. That's during the missing video. Trooper Proctor, Trooper Buchnik never sees Brian Higgins' phone. They speak with him, and he takes it upon himself to use his own resources, Brian Higgins, within the federal government to ask a friend, Special Agent Mac Kelch, to download only the text messages in his phone between Karen and him and him and John. And that's it. 
We have to take his word for it that we got all of them. And we certainly don't have any communications between him and Brian Albert, for instance. On February 10th, when he shows up to his interview with troopers Buchnick and Proctor, he brings with them copies of the text that he has deemed relevant in their murder investigation. And he hands them the copies. Okay. of Okay, let's, let's talk about this real quick because this comment got my attention. Um, you're saying Auntie Bev should have dismissed the case based on the fact that Higgins was being investigated. That's actually a really good point because I'm not sure if Higgins is being investigated. Okay, I'm still not convinced of this. Again, we are exploring this together, folks. I don't know what's going on yet. We're exploring this idea together. We're exploring this, this theory of Brian Higgins being a grass together. Okay, now, my issue here, my issue is why didn't Beverly Canoni, all right, Why didn't the defense, if Higgins is under investigation for the murder of John O'Keefe, because what else would he be under investigation for? He wouldn't be under investigation for, um, for how he conducted the investigation. He's not, he's not assigned the investigation into the death of John O'Keefe. So this is important to remember. Stay with me here, folks. So if Higgins was under investigation, that would mean that he was under investigation for the murder of John O'Keefe. What else? Or at least covering it up. Okay? So, okay, maybe perjury. Under investigation. I mean, did they threaten him with perjury? Dude, you're going you're gonna to... That that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Um, that's possible too. It could be for something that we don't know. Could be for being a dirty fucking cop, right? And there's Dagnabbit. And Dagnabbit is saying Higgins is not under investigation. I'm gonna finish reading your tweet, Dagnabbit. By the way, I just haven't done that. I've gotten there yet. But if Higgins is is under investigation because I don't, I'm with you, Dagdabbit. It doesn't make sense to me that he is. It doesn't make sense to me that he is because if Higgins was under investigation and there's exculpatory evidence in those phone records that indicate that, that Brian Higgins absolutely, because the defense knows what's in the phone records. They just, they just don't know what to, uh, that they just don't know. If they're, they're trying to be able to get to use it. That's what that hearing was about. But they know what's in the phone records. So, I mean, I well, an Angela Angela Marie, I'm getting to that. If if Higgins was a, a culprit in this thing and he was under investigation for it, and there was evidence of it, this would have been presented to Judge Canoni already, and she would have had to have dismissed the case. This would have been something that he would have brought up in open court the way that he is now and 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 straight up been like, there is evidence of Brian Higgins admitting to this and this and 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 we hear conversations taking place between him and Brian Albert where they blah, blah, blah. None of that happened. None of that happened. Okay, so a cooperating witness for, and they're holding something else over him? Maybe. Maybe, but I don't think that he's, I, I don't think that he's, under, he's definitely not under investigation for the murder of Karen Reed. So I just want to clear that up right now. He's not under investigation for the murder of Karen Reed because um, we already know that the people in charge of investigating the murder of Karen Reed aren't investigating the murder, or, or sorry, the murder of John O'Keefe. They're not investigating the murder of John O'Keefe. I mean... They're trying to pin it on Karen Reed. Now, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and say that 
whatever this proffer thing is, whatever Alan Jackson says, or sorry, David Yanetti says here, whatever he says here is, is, is going to be, um, the, the, as far as a proffer thing goes, it, 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 I, I don't think that it applies to him being a cooperating witness into what happened to John O'Keefe necessarily. At least I'm not there yet. But I want to see what context he uses it, just for the sake of... ...of the extraction that he had his friend do. He then calls Matt Kelch the weekend uh, of this uh, uh, incident uh, to do the limited extraction. He never tells uh, Trooper Buchnick or Trooper Prockner how he extracted the tests, uh, despite the fact that it was done by a friend of his in the federal government. Um, during the federal proffer, Brian Higgins admits that he had been served with a preservation order and the Commonwealth told him he could destroy his phone despite the order. He then drives to a military. Brian Higgins admits that um, during the federal proffer, Brian Higgins admits that he had been served with a preservation order and the Commonwealth told him he could destroy his phone despite the order. He okay. This is important. So during a proffer, Whatever that means, whatever. Okay. So obviously, and according to what Google says, that the, the proffer agreement is a written contract between a federal prosecutor and a defendant, uh, a federal prosecutor and a defendant, or a person under criminal investigation. It says, or a person under criminal investigation. So that person does not need to be under criminal investigation. Where the defendant agrees to provide the prosecutor with useful information. So maybe Higgins just had a change of heart. Okay. So, but it does not specify, like, just because he's in a proffer agreement does not mean that he is under investigation, uh, according to the definition of a, of a proffer. But it is a written contract between a federal prosecutor and a defendant. I mean, that is, it just is, okay? <laughs> um, so there's clearly a defendant here. <laughs> I mean, it does say defendant. So I, I don't know what the circumstances in which he would be in a, in a proffer agreement with the feds. I don't know to... to the reasons as to why that is. I don't think it's Karen Reed related. Um, but they they are tar they're targeting Brian Higgins right now and naming him because of his uh involvement in the Karen Reed and John O'Keefe situation. Um so right, and that's just Google. I mean, I don't know exactly like. I'm sure there's definitely a more legal and and thorough way to define this, and 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 there's more broad possibilities as to what a proffer would be uh, applied into. But um, like I said, that's just the quick Google uh, definition of it. Now, for by a friend of his in the federal government. Um, during the federal proffer, Brian Higgins admits that he had been served with a preservation order and the Commonwealth told him he could destroy his phone despite the order. Okay. So during this proffer, he had been given a preservation order. And what, the, what that sounds like to me is that he was given a court order to preserve his tech his evidence but then michael morrissey apparently told him ignore the order now why is michael morrissey dealing directly with brian higgins see that's another that's another issue right there Why is Michael Morrissey in direct contact and telling Brian Higgins what he can or cannot do with his tech? That's what I want to know.
proffer. Brian Higgins admits that he had been served with a preservation order and the Commonwealth told him he could destroy his phone despite the order. So why, first of all, why are you destroying your phones? This is the obvious question. As Turtle Boy has pointed out, <laughs> uh, this very, very obvious point that we should all be asking this question. All of us should be asking this question. Why are innocent people destroying their phones? Innocent people don't destroy their phones. Innocent people don't destroy their phones, people. I've never destroyed a phone in my life. Not deliberately. And why is the Commonwealth, why is Michael Morrissey's office, which is under federal investigation, telling a cop, a federal agent, to do, that, that he can destroy his phone? Go ahead. Ignore the order. Fuck that court order. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of everything. Like, what authority? Why... That that's another thing that's 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 crazy. Because if I'm if I'm Lolly, I'm gonna stand up there and go the 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 idea that the the district attorney's office has any authority over a federal agent to destroy his property is just absurd. He's gonna say my word against his. Brian Higgins is gonna say, well, no, he told me to fucking destroy my phone. Told me it was cool. And then that person's going to go, I mean, Lolly's going to go, that's that's ridiculous. That's crazy. The the notion that 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 the Norfolk County District Attorney would would order a federal agent to destroy his tech, well, that implies obviously he's getting rid of evidence. Not not the 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 prestigious Norfolk County District Attorney. No way. That's absurd. But, I mean, Higgins is willing to testify in open court that, that that's what happened. In this written proffer agreement. That he was told that he could destroy his phone by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So, yeah. He then drives to a military base on Cape Cod, opens his phone, breaks the SIM card, and throws the phone away. And he says that he discussed destroying his phone with Brian Albert. Brian Albert also destroyed his phone. And Brian Albert uh, said that he had uh, received some text that concerns him as an explanation. And after that, Brian Higgins changes his phone number and changes his cell carrier. In short, he was present that night. He All right. So Brian Albert's excuse for destroying his phone is he, he got some texts that concern him. I get texts that concern me all the time. I get texts that don't concern me all the time. You know what I do? I hit the block button. And if for some reason, they come up in a criminal investigation. I know I didn't do anything wrong here. Take my phone. Go ahead. And if anything comes up that that I should have been concerned about, well, I, I hit the block button. You know? <laughs> I hit the block button. You can see that I was not interested in these types of messages, so I hit the block button. I didn't want to talk to this person anymore. I didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. They were getting, they were blasting my phone and blowing it up with bullshit, and I didn't want to talk to them about nothing. Fuck them. So I, I blocked them. But I'm not going to revolve my entire, every piece of data that I have in my phone, I'm not going to destroy it because of a troll. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's not going to happen. Not gonna just just I like, yeah I got a I I got a text that concerned me so, you know. <laughs> well, uh, 
I'll tell you what. I mean, well, why did you burn down your house? Well, saw a cockroach. Whole house had to come down. It concerned me. Concerned me that we I, I might be getting a cockroach problem. So burn the house down. That's that's how much that makes sense to me. That Brian Higgins destroyed his phone because, or sorry, Brian Albert destroyed his phone because he had uh, a, a, a text message that concerned him. Yeah, toilet got clogged. Man, I, I was concerned. So I lit this fucker up. Wouldn't you? What? What? This is crazy. He had a motive, and there is plenty of consciousness of guilt cover-up evidence with regard to Mr. Higgins. Moving on to Colin Albert. Shortly before January 29th of 2022, Colin Albert lived with his parents, Christopher Albert and Julie Albert, on John O'Keefe's street, just two doors down. We have evidence of bad blood between Colin Albert and John O'Keefe. We have evidence. How old, how old was Colin Albert at that time? I believe he was 16 at that time. Okay. We have evidence that Colin Albert and John O'Keefe used to get in confrontations because Colin Albert used to cut through his yard without permission, and John O'Keefe was not happy about that. We have evidence that Colin Albert used to throw beer cans intentionally into John O'Keefe's bushes, and John O'Keefe was not happy, happy about that. We have evidence that Christopher and Man, Julie Albert knew of this conflict. You know how fucking pissed off I would be, dude? You know what I mean? Some fucking shithead. Some shithead fucking kid is throwing beer cans in my bushes, trying to make a home for kids that ain't even mine. I'm trying to, like, do something here, man, and you're fucking throwing beer cans in it, you know? By some little asshole who makes videos going bang, 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 bang. Like, fuck that kid. I'm not even trying to lie, man. Fuck that kid. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I don't give a fuck. That kid is an asshole. What's he doing drinking beer in the first place? I'll tell you what. I drank beer when I was 16. I was an asshole. Like, you think I'm an asshole now? Dude, when I was 16, I was the biggest fucking shit bag. I mean, I wasn't that bad. But I didn't give a fuck about anything. I mean, I was a, I was basically a nihilist. I just didn't give a fuck about anything. And I like to walk around entitled and act like I fucking own the world, bro. I give a shit about somebody's bushes. But I'll tell you what. If somebody said something to me about it, well, they'd be justified, wouldn't they? Now, the difference is me at 16, if somebody would have said something to me about it, I'd have been like, all right, man, you know, whatever, you know, probably mouth some shit on the way, like, fuck that guy, fuck dickhead cop, you know what I mean? But not if my family were cops, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not even that, not even that. But what I wouldn't do is fucking target the guy. You know, and be like, fuck that guy. But somebody who who feels entitled and whose fucking family tend, seems to own the fucking town. Well, yeah, I'm going to probably be if the attitude that I had back then, if I was in that position, I would probably had that attitude, too. And I would have probably looked at John O'Keefe like, who the fuck does this guy think he is talking to me? Does he know who my uncle is? Does he know who my dad is? Like, there's video footage of this kid being a fucking asshole, dude. You know what I mean? There's video footage of this kid being a fucking asshole. It's not like I'm making it up. You know? <laughs> like, if if he was 16 and an asshole, 
and he's 21 now or however fucking old he is now. Um, if he was 16 and an asshole and however old he is now as an asshole, well, then, and he's still an asshole, well, then that tells me that he was definitely an asshole at 16. He doesn't get a pass because he was 16. You know what I mean? Like, he was definitely an asshole at 16 if he's still an asshole now. Give me this bullshit. Poor Callen. Poor Callen. Get the kid. Just the kid's an asshole. Sometimes kids are assholes, bro. Now, not like a seven-year-old. You know what I mean? I don't know nothing. 16-year-old is aware of their surroundings, bro. You know what I mean? A 16-year-old is capable of making decisions, knowing the difference between a bad one and a good one. They're perfectly capable of this. Like, we have evidence that they referred to John, o John O'Keefe as Nebercracker. That's a character from, a, I think, a kid's movie uh, who was known as the get-off-my-lawn guy. When John O'Keefe and Karen Reed were vacationing in Aruba over New Year's... Yeah, and if he's the get-off-my-lawn guy and you're a 16-year-old asshole calling him Nebercracker, you know what I mean? Like, that sounds to me like you've got contempt for him. Like, if you're the kind of person to throw beer cans in someone's fucking bushes, like an asshole, well, then, yeah, you're capable of doing other shit. You're capable of targeting the guy, whether it's fucking egg in his house or getting him in a fucking basement and fucking him up. You know what I mean? Like, that tells me you're capable of that kind of shit. Now, do I think that the intention was to kill him? No. No, of course not. And that's if it was Colin, you know? But do I think he is asshole enough to fucking feel so fucking invincible that, that he would attack John in, 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 in a safe space that would be his uncle's house? Sure. Sure. Especially if everyone who's hanging out and including my uncle are a bunch of fucking assholes. Well, then, yeah. <laughs> like, Because that's another thing. Like, one thing Turtle Boy's investigations have, have revealed to me is that everyone in that house was an asshole. Everybody but John. Everybody who went into that house that night was a fucking asshole. To some degree. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Like, if I'm, you know, and I'm not saying just because you're an asshole, you're capable of murder. That's not what I'm saying. But there's no character. There's no, there's no character, you know, like, there's no pumping up anybody's character that was in that house. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I won't forget, Cherry. Thank you. There's, 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 yeah. Like, everybody in that house sucks. You know, to some degree or another. Like, <laughs> so, I mean, there's nobody in that house that's making me go, there's no way that person did that shit, is my point. There's no way that person, you know, had a hand in covering this up. You know, there's nobody in that house that's making me go, you know, nah, there's no way. Everybody in that house, to some degree or another, is a fucking piece of shit. Like, so. New Year's Eve 2022, the Alberts, Christopher and Julie, taunted him. They went to his porch and they had photos taken of themselves drinking on John's property when he wasn't there to do anything about it, evidencing they knew how upset he was at what Colin Albert had been doing. Now, the investigators in this case, Your Honor, including Michael Proctor, kept Colin Albert's name completely out of the police report. When this case began, I had no idea who Colin Albert was. Um, I received a tip right from the jump that Brian Albert and his nephew had beaten up John O'Keefe. I didn't even know Brian o Albert had a nephew at that time. But after receiving the tip, I learned of the conflict that Colin Albert had with John O'Keefe. So I sent a letter 
to Mr. Lally, I believe by certified mail. I knew that the DA's office was planning to present evidence or witnesses to a grand jury. And at that early juncture, before anybody uh, had, been, had asked them to indict, um, I notified the DA of three potential suspects, the ones that I'm talking about yeah, now. That's totally. Brian Higgins, Brian Albert. They're to the Alberts are totally the fucking O'Doyles, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, O'Doyle rules. <laughs> They're totally the O'Doyles, bro. Good call, Captain Skid Marks. <laughs> well done. Well done. And Albert and Colin Albert. Um, after he received that letter at our next court appearance, I'm sure Mr. Lally can confirm this. Um, he acknowledged that both Brian Albert and Brian Higgins would be testifying or had testified before the grand jury, but he questioned why I included Colin Albert in my letter. He told me at the time that he had no evidence that Colin Albert was there that night. However, after receiving my letter, lo and behold, multiple witnesses testified that Colin Albert was at 34 Fairview the night of January 28th to 29th. And now the DA will argue, I'm sure, at trial that he left before Joan O'Keefe arrived. We don't find their evidence compelling. We don't accept it. We are not required to accept their theory of the case. We're entitled to present a defense. So that's important. That's important. So... Yanetti is saying, and this is important. This is the stuff that 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 Plevin chooses to ignore. Okay, Yanetti's careful with his words, not in the sense that Plevin's accusing him of. He's careful with his words in the sense that he's he, he wants to be able to prove everything that he's saying. Because overall, what's really going to win this case for Karen Reed is for Jackson and Yanetti to have more credibility with the jury than the Commonwealth. Than the, than the prosecution. It's going to be very, very important for them to do that. And in order for them to do that, they have to be able to bring receipts on everything, no matter how little outlandish it comes off. They have to bring receipts for everything because the jury's going to be expecting David Yanetti and Alan Jackson to play games, to play misdirection. They're going to come into that jury box expecting the defense because we all know innocent until proven guilty is a thing. Of course, of course, por supuesto. It is absolutely, yes. And we all go into court with the mindset of innocent until proven guilty. Bullshit. Wrong. Not true. Not true. Not true. Guarantee you every single juror will apply their thinking with the attitude of, innocent until proven guilty with the concept of innocent until proven guilty, knowing that it's their duty to base their decisions on the concept of everyone is innocent until proven guilty. But the bottom line is the underlying factor of I wouldn't be sitting in this jury box and there wouldn't be a defendant unless there was probably a reason why they're sitting there as a defendant. There's, there's just no escaping that that's just human nature. There's nothing you can do about that. That's human nature. So Jackson and Yanetti would be absolutely naive, and I do not believe that they are, but it would be absolutely naive of them to not assume this. And so what they're going to do when there is a jury is they're going to win the jury over with credibility. And the way you do that with credibility, the way you build credibility is you bring facts, facts that can be proven. And if you are able to prove more your case than the other party, and in this part, in this case, the other party being the person or uh, the party which the burden of proof is on, then you've got yourself an acquittal here. Or a mistrial, or what the fuck ever happens. But yeah. Defense. His presence at 34 Fairview gave him the opportunity, along with the motive, 
to harm John O'Keefe. With regard to Brian Albert, Your Honor, um, this is a well-connected, well-known, powerful family in the town of Canton, Massachusetts. Brian Albert was present at that home when Colin Albert was there. <coughs> Colin Albert is a member of the Albert family. He's nephew of Brian Albert. We have evidence that Brian Albert had expressed hostility toward John O'Keefe as well. And we know that he initiated a phone call with Brian Higgins at 2.22 in the morning. He reached out to Brian Higgins. And then he picked up the phone when Brian Higgins came back and they spoke for 22 seconds. And they never revealed any of that to investigators. Again, consciousness of guilt and perhaps most of all, Brian Albert is a first responder. He is duty bound to help somebody who's in trouble. He was notified that John O'Keefe was in trouble. Brian Albert stayed in his home. He knew what was going on outside. His sister-in-law was out there, civilians, medical personnel eventually arrived. He did nothing. Now, the only explanation that I can think of for that would be that Brian Albert did not want John O'Keefe to live. And the very least explanation as to why he would not want John O'Keefe to live is so that he wouldn't talk. Because everything that we know about this case supports that. Everything that we know about this case supports the idea that Brian Albert did not want John O'Keefe to live because he did not want him to talk. Now, whatever role that Brian Albert had in the, in the murder of John O'Keefe remains to be seen. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you that Brian Albert did not do anything to John O'Keefe simply because he wanted him to die because he didn't want him to talk. That is also consciousness of guilt. Now, Your Honor, with regard to all of that third-party culprit evidence to admit it substantively, which I would assert to the court is, is both overwhelming and powerful, with regard to the Bowdoin uh, argument here, the police investigated none of that. That didn't come from the Commonwealth. They had a, a complete lack of curiosity as to what was going on in that house that night. They didn't care. Investigators never went in. The feds investigated, and that's where we got a majority of this evidence. So, you know, to, to the extent that the Commonwealth now claims that they didn't have notice of this, um, I, I beg to defer. They, they got notice of this when we got notice of this. Uh, you know, the Finney case, Your Honor, again, I'm, I'm well familiar with it. It stood for the proposition that, you know, if, if you want to point the finger at a third party culprit, you've got a constitutional right to do that. And if you want to point out inadequacies in a police investigation, you have a constitutional right to do that. Right? It's for those reasons that I ask you to deny the Commonwealth's motions. Okay. Thank you. Any response, Mr. Lally? Uh, briefly, Your Honor. Um, just first, uh, again, what, what the case law requires is evidence and not just mere speculation. Yeah, that, saying annoying. that you have evidence is not actually evidence. Um, I, I do find it somewhat interesting that Mr. Yannetti uh, wrote apparently four and a half pages of notes, but didn't have time to write a motion uh, to admit uh, the evidence uh, that he claims that he has. Yeah, so this is the, the, the big, you know, to do is is you know and bev even gets annoyed and says and in all of the the, the the hundreds of pages of documents i didn't see a third party culprit or any mention of a third party culprit and then 
prosecution's like, yeah, 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 exactly. They didn't even, they didn't even file. Well, no, they're, they're arguing it right there. Maybe they want to manage as little time as to not give the third party culprits time to be able to further cover up their actions. I mean, they're not going to show that hand right away. You know? Um, and then she's saying, I want that in writing. Okay, cool. You'll have it. <laughs> I mean, you'll have it. But now, I mean, it's out there. It's out there. So. Yeah, I, I, I know, Bob Weir. I just, I don't understand. Does Bev know? That like we're hearing Jackson Yanetti or Lolly talk and it's <laughs> okay. I'll hear from the Commonwealth. Like, lady, relax. Justice for Ick and Mel. I agree. Justice for Ick and Mel. Of course, we want justice for Ick and Mel. Um. Let me continue reading uh, Dag Nabbit's post here. Um, how deep is ATF Brian, uh, Agent Brian Higgins into the murder of John O'Keefe? We now know that he uh, used federal resources to surgically extract messages from his phone for the purposes of obstructing the MSP investigation into O'Keefe's murder destroyed and disposed of his phone on a U.S. military base, opposed his authority as a federal agent to, to intimidate Massachusetts State Police investigators and withhold information from them for the purpose of, of frustrating and obstructing their investigation. I mean, yeah. Uh, abused his authority. Now, these are, these are points of opinion, okay? Uh, I share these opinions so far, but... These are points of opinion. Um, what is a fact is that he destroyed his phone. Now, we don't know for a fact that it was uh, for the purpose of frustrating and obstructing the investigation into the murder of John O'Keefe. Um, that's not fact, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement that that's likely why. Uh, abused his authority as a federal agent to gain access to evidence Karen Reed's car in a murder investigation in which he is at least both a witness and a lifelong friend of local law enforcement officers and the owner of the home where John O'Keefe was killed. This is also true. Uh, lied repeatedly under oath to investigators and to both state and federal grand juries about his whereabouts and communications on the night John O'Keefe was killed. See, here's the thing. Because the only thing they could argue is oh, well, they, all of these people were involved, you know, all of these cops, these cops who, who, who aren't assigned to the investigation, but they're involved in the in investigation They're And, and, and why, why that's suspicious. And then somebody might argue, well, it's not, it's not suspicious. They're experienced law enforcement officers and they want to help. But in what way did they actually help the case? Show me an instance where it is now public because it wasn't public before that Berkowitz was in direct contact with Higgins and, and Brian Albert. Right? I mean, <laughs> this is this is all relative relatively new. Okay, so you have you have Berkowitz and then you have Higgins who is there where the car is is being inspected in a in the Canton police evidence bay where where it shouldn't even be it's not a Canton case cuz the thing is is I'm sorry but there's no way to argue this point because nothing that they've done actually shows that it helped their investigation. 
they lied about people being involved in the investigation. And then later when it comes out through phone records that other people were involved in the investigation, then, oh, but dials and blah, 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 nothing but excuses. We're seeing nothing but evidence of cover uh, of a cover-up of a cover-up. The cover-up of the cover-up has been unveiled. That's done. Right? I mean, because why else? Because the thing is, is, is wouldn't they say, wouldn't they just come out and say, well, John was a friend and we wanted to help. We wanted to get to the bottom of this. And that didn't happen. That's not what happened at all. There was just nothing but shady cover-ups. Nothing but undocumented searches and everything was undocumented and all the evidence seems to have disappeared. We got gaps in video. We got taillights that mysteriously just, just appeared on the side of the road by off-duty police chiefs. And uh, and then, you know, the lead investigator not even documenting uh, his findings in, in, in the smoking gun evidence, supposedly, the, the, the prosecution says. And then we have Lolly, the lead prosecutor on this. The assistant district attorney standing up there and lying, saying that something says one thing and it doesn't, and then proving that it doesn't to the whole world, proving to the judge, hey, I'm a liar. <laughs> That's what Lolly did. Nobody, nobody proved it. The defense didn't, didn't prove that Lolly was a liar. This isn't even trial yet. The prosecution finally shows up some evidence. The prosecution finally goes, we got this. Let me show you what we got, judge. Mm, all the confidence in the world. We've got Karen Reed saying through body cam footage that she saw, that she witnessed Brian Albert and, Kev and Colin Albert smashing or brian albert and higgins smashing uh john's head in the back of my tail light we have we have her on camera saying this and then lolly is like vanna white going here you go your honor here's the video footage watch and then she says something fucking completely different nothing that even resembles that Something to the point to where Plevin is even blasting all over Twitter. Oh, no. Molly is just as much of a liar as Gennady and Jackson in my eyes. My opinion hasn't changed yet, but... Uh, uh, shut up. Like, so far, Gennady and Jackson have, have, have done nothing but explain things and say things that they can prove. They just said, we have witnesses. We have witnesses. We have phone records. We have independent federal findings. And then what do you have? All the way up to the Commonwealth. You have motions trying to suppress evidence. You have motions from the Commonwealth trying to suppress the defense from their defense. For, just suppress the jury from hearing the defense's defense. That's not shady. They were like, oh, well, we could shut the people up outside. Maybe we could shut the defense up too. If we're going to take their fucking rights away well then fuck karen reed's rights too which they've been doing the fact that people don't find it incredibly shady that the commonwealth is trying to block the defense from being able to i mean that defense isn't gonna fly if they can't prove it you can only be afraid of it if there's proof behind it that is incredibly telling how do you not put that together think about that for a second because 
the allegations that the defense are making, if they can't prove that shit, the jury's going to hate them. The jury's going to go, dude, so you're sitting up here saying that this woman who had problems with her boyfriend didn't kill her boyfriend, but all of these decorated police officers and federal agents did and covered it up on top of the very prosecution, the district attorney's office that, that is trying her case. That's what you got. If I'm a juror and you don't bring that shit with receipts, I'm going, this woman is fucking guilty. This defense is, 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 is insane. This is the most desperate, pathetic attempt to a defense that I've ever seen. You think that's the route they're going to go? No fucking way. No fucking way would they go that route unless they could prove it. They're pointing fingers at some fucking, at, at, at some credible people in the eyes of a jury. Like, this is not, this is a nightmare for Karen Reed. This is a nightmare for her. Because the entity that she's fighting against, who knows where it ends? Who knows where it ends? So, yeah, of course. Like, there's no fucking way that these experienced defense attorneys are going to are going to make accusations like this without being able to prove it. And again, they have to win the credibility. They have to win credibility with the jury. They have to earn that. And the only way they're going to earn that is by bringing proof to their allegations. And here, this is what they've been doing. The whole time, the defense is having these hearings and going, the federal investigation find, found this and blah, blah, blah. You have, to, you have to dismiss this case. This is crazy. And I think the Norfolk County DA needs to be sanctioned. For even trying to bring this to trial. They're not going to say that without being able to prove their case. And they absolutely proved it. Judge Bev just said, nope. She saw the proof. She said, nope. She knows for a fact. She knows just as well as anybody else. It wasn't like they uncovered some, it's not like some witness wrote a written statement saying Brian Higgins told me that he destroyed his phone and that Brian Albert destroyed his too. And it was because the, the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office told him to do it. That's not what he said. He said Higgins, Higgins said in a statement, in a proffer agreement, stated that he, Brian Higgins, admitted confessed to destroying his phone and that he knows Brian Albert destroyed his and that he was given an order to preserve yet he ignored the order under the behest of the Norfolk County DA's office. Thank you, Scott McGinnis. This is why this uh, Commonwealth believes they could pull this off. They believe a jury will not believe or grasp the scope of this cover-up. Uh, be believe this the police state yeah i mean it's a thing <laughs> it's a thing i'm not saying it's not uh scott mcginnis appreciate you and uh everything that you do man uh, we don't have the same opinions we don't share the same opinions on on the police in general but I respect your opinion uh, because this whole case is definitely not a good look for anybody who argues your opinion. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah, this is. Um, yeah, Lolly's done nothing but lie. You see what I'm saying now? Here's the thing is, is, is. Lolly would not try to block this defense from taking place 
because again, it's a ridiculous defense. It's easy. It's like, dude, oh, this is this this is a lock. So her entire defense is pointing fingers at cops without being able to prove it. Okay, cool. Fuck it. Let her. You know what I mean? They're afraid of the proof. That's everything that the Commonwealth has been doing is coming from the nature of wanting to cover something up, not actually get to the truth. When you are trying to suppress the truth, that tells me that you're trying to cover it up. And you are not in the pursuit of justice if you are trying to cover up the truth. You're just not. You're not acting in the interest of justice in any way, shape, or form. Now, as far as Higgins goes, um, I find that interesting. Let me let me let me keep going here. Let me keep reading um Dag Nabbit's post. Uh, because law enforcement officers in the U.S. government are subject. Now, remember, this is very opinionated, but um, because law enforcement officers and the U.S. government are subject to federal laws and regulations, Higgins' position as a federal agent is the key that U.S. Attorney Josh Levy will use to open the door to the federal courtroom where this case will finally end. Uh, in a sternly worded letter to Judge Canoni on Wednesday, Levy warned Judge, warned Judge that if she does not comply with Fed regulations regarding the FBI's investigation into what really happened to O'Keefe, the Department of Justice has the authority to yank the case from her state court and place it in federal court, which they do. Uh, the Levy reminded Judge Canoni that federal law uh, 28 U.S.C. 1442 empowers him to remove this case from her and try it in federal court. Now, that's very telling that they would even feel the need to write Judge Canoni this th th this letter. Uh, that law is not about the TUI process. It's not about fed uh, federal crimes versus state crimes. It's not about John O'Keefe's status as a police officer. It's not about public corruption. What it is about is what happens when federal law enforcement agents are involved in violent crimes. This is an interesting point. ATF agent Brian Higgins is undeniably involved in the violent murder of John O'Keefe, and I agree with that. He misused federal resources to obstruct justice and destroy evidence implicating him in a violent crime. He abused his federal authority to illegally insinuate himself into an investigation involving him and his close personal friends. He lied repeatedly under oath, which he did. Uh, and honestly, thank God he did, because, Bri because if Brian Higgins didn't Smash his, hadn't smashed his phones, the law and the public trust like a juiced up dark Hulk. Uh, Karen Reed would be facing a, a life sentence and Higgins and the McAlberts would be quite literally getting away with murder. Um, I'm looking at It says here, finally, given that the federal court's protective order sets forth strict parameters for dissemination of the confidential materials and non non-compliance with that order affects a federal interest, the United States is obligated to ensure compliance with the protective order. Should the court authorize the unsealing of the filings containing con confidential materials in a manner that is inconsistent with the protective order, it is current in its cor current form, the United States may need to take appropriate action to ensure that the federal court order and its interests are adequately enforced, which could include removal of federal court of any adverse ruling pursuant to 28 USC 1442. Now, this is it's different than what's said in the, in the tweet here. This is a little different than what's said in the tweet because what it says here is, um, should the court authorize the unsealing of the final of the filings containing uh confidential materials in a manner that is inconsistent with the protective order in its current form okay so that is strictly that is specific that's specifying that letter from josh levy to judge canoni is specifying the release of the 
um, it's specifying the 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 confidential materials um, that are inconsistent with the protective order. If so, if she unseals uh, the protective order, if she unseals the the documents that are under a protective order, if she unseals them and it's inconsistent with the protective order, then they will exercise, she, they're warning, Josh Levy is warning that he could exercise his authority to take over the case. But it doesn't really have anything to do with what was stated here in the, in the post. So because it was highlighted, and again, uh, I, I'm I'm reading this in real time with you guys. So, um, yeah, it, it's. And they are in 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 Dagnabbit's defense. Dagnabbit is referring strictly to the uh, the law in which it exists, the twenty eight USC four fourteen forty two. That law, um, and it's not about federal crimes versus state crimes. It's not about John O'Keefe's status as a police officer, and it's not about um, public corruption. It's what happens when federal law enforcement agents are involved in a federal crime. Now, see, that's that's not accurate. That's not the context which the letter was used. Um, so it wasn't Josh Levy saying, hey, if one of these guys turns out to be involved in a violent crime, a federal agent, then we're taking the case over. But they could. They could. But. They're only going to do so if it's in the interest of proving their own case. Again, unless this becomes in the interest of, of proving their case against the targets of their investigation being Michael Morrissey and, and whoever else. Okay? The targets of their investigation. If, if her actions somehow intervene with that... Well then, yeah, they're going to take over the, the, the they'll, they'll take it over. But I don't see that happening. They're they're only going to do that under strict circumstances, under inevitable circumstances, under circumstances that just cannot be avoided. Um, that's that's the only way. That, like the feds, it's a very very right, especially right now in this climate this country's in. You're, you're not going to just allow federal intervention in something because they could flex their muscles and do it. They better have a damn good reason to do it. If the feds are going to are, are, are going to strip a, a an independent state or a commonwealth of their power, much less a, a, a an attorney, uh, you know, a, or sorry, a, a, a county or a, or a city, you know what I mean? Like, that's why we have mayors that's why we have governors you know what i mean so um it, it, the feds just can't come in and start stripping these people of their power that that absolutely like it 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 it, it stains the very it risks the very fabric of what this country is based on so we can't do that uh the feds can't do that um so they're not going to just swoop in and be like, you know, we don't like how you're handling this case. So we're going to we're going to take it over. That's 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 not going to happen. Um, so. The big question here is. Is Brian Higgins a grass? I mean, yeah. Now, I mean, obviously, if there's a proffer. If there's a proffer deal on the table here and he's the one stating this stuff, then yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely a cooperating witness with the, with the feds most definitely. And I would say that he's definitely a cooperating witness with the feds in regards to this investigation, because why would the, why would the defense have access to it?
Why would it even be a factor in the federal investigation into why would it be in in the in the TUI report? You know what I mean? So do I think he's a fucking grass? Absolutely. Is he snitching on somebody? Absolutely. Now, I wonder though. Let's just say, for instance, um, I don't know if he's who he's going to testify. Like, it could just be something as simple as the phones, right? Like, we won't make you a part of this investigation if you testify that Michael Morrissey or this person under Michael Morrissey told you that it was okay to destroy your phone after you were given a a, a federal protection order, a pres, uh, preservation order, excuse me, a federal preservation order. You were, you, you were handed this, you were served a preservation order. Um, so if you could testify that you were told by a higher authority than yourself, such as the Norfolk County DA's office, and I don't know what kind of authority he has over a federal agent, but uh, if you can testify to that, then that'll be enough. Because again, Michael Morrissey is the target of this federal investigation. And that might just be all the information they need. You know, they, they're, they're, you know, like think of, think of, uh, Josh Levy as, as, uh, Alec Baldwin's character in The Departed, in The Departed. I know all you Bostonians have seen that movie. You remember when he says, we're not here to uh, solve the case of the missing scumbag. We're here to nail Costello. See what I'm saying? So Josh Levy's basically saying, I'm not here to solve the case of a murdered police officer. I'm here to nail Michael Morrissey. And he's perfectly, perfectly justified in that in that in that reasoning he's absolutely justified in that reasoning that's not their job they're not here to solve the case of of the murdered police officer john o'keefe there's a corrupt da and if i had to guess john o'keefe's case is a drop in the bucket in their entire investigation so everybody who thinks that the whole world revolves around the john o'keefe case it doesn't our worlds do. My world kind of does right now. Your world kind of does right now. I understand that. But John, but Josh Levy is trying to prove a case here against a Norfolk County against the Norfolk County DA. So it's naive to think that it's just this case where he's doing dirty shit. He's doing a bunch of dirty shit. This investigation is not like the federal investigation is not solely into the investigation of the murder of John O'Keefe. It is into the Norfolk County DA's office. But yes, are they investigating the investigation of the Norfolk County DA's office? But again, that is just, yes, they are. That is, that is what they're doing, but it is just an aspect. It is just a drop in the bucket of things that they are investigating. It's one of the investigated the investigations that Josh Levy, Josh Levy's office is investigating. It's one of the investigations. Who knows how many others there are where Michael Morrissey abused his power and used his foot soldiers, Tully, Proctor, fucking Higgins, possibly, Buchanan, where he used those foot soldiers to do dirty shit in other cases. I guarantee you that the John O'Keefe case is just a drop in the bucket. And if it is just a drop in the bucket, in the bucket, if it is just a drop in the bucket, well, then we're not going to see indictments for a long time, people. Who knows? Who knows what their office is uncovering in some other case that we don't even know about? That we that went completely under our ra radar, who knows? But that's going to take time. 
they're not gonna they're not gonna lock down a prosecution and a conviction. They're not gonna lock down a a, a conviction of Michael Morrissey just based on the John O'Keefe case. They're not gonna take that chance. They want to say there's a pattern with this man and his office abusing its power. You'll see it in the John O'Keefe case. You'll see it in the Sandra Birchmore case. You'll see it in this case, in this case, in this case. There is a pattern. That is what Josh Levy's office is aiming to do. Prove that this man is abusing his power. And the reason why he abuses his power is because he is corrupt. That's exactly what they're aiming to do. So it's going to be a while. I, I wouldn't feel good about this. It's like I'll, I, I would get the same feeling. If they just started handing out indictments tomorrow, I'd get the same gut feeling that I got when I heard the, the DA address in Colorado that they were charging um, or, uh, 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 Barry Morphew with the murder of Suzanne Morphew. They didn't even have a body yet. They had nothing. Suzanne Morphew was later found, but they, they, they shot their load too quick. They got eager. And they indicted him way too quick. Because it's quite possible and even maybe arguably likely that Barry Morphew got away with murdering his wife. And why is that? Why is that? Holy wow. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. We got a super chat. I think we got a super chat. <laughs> wow, Mark. Thank you so much, buddy. Uh, towards your hard work week next week. Or your hard work next week. Fuck Plevin. Thank you so much. That means a lot, man. Yes, I will be I will be up here, you guys. The idea is to get you guys so fucking sick of me you never see me again. I'm gonna be talking about this case nonstop. And I will be covering every minute of that trial with, that is within my abilities to do so. Uh, so thank you, Mark Callahan, for that. That means a lot. Appreciate that. Um, Barry can be charged again. Barry can be charged again. But here's the thing is they took a really, really big chance because the defense can say they tried to charge him before. Why are we here again? They get to play that shit in front of a jury and be like, People, I mean, the district attorney has tried this before. Why we're all here again is beyond me. You know what I mean? So the 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 the, the U.S. attorney is not going to do that. Josh Levy's office is not going to just is not going to to risk all of this. Is going to risk. Letting Michael Morrissey get away with all the other corruption that's probably surrounding the John O'Keefe case. And I guarantee you that that's a lot of evidence to, to, to collect. That's a lot of investigating to be done and a lot of evidence to collect in order to hand out the proper indictments and make sure that this person goes to jail. That Michael Morrissey goes to fucking prison. Because I promise you, if you guys think that what he's doing is an injustice to Karen Reed and, and an injustice to John O'Keefe's memory, but ma mainly an injustice to Karen Reed by robbing her of her rights to the point to where you believe, and Sandra Birchmore as well, and you believe that he belongs in prison for it, well, then you need to be patient. You need to calm down and wait. Don't listen to the idiots like Plevin. Who are saying, well, where are the indictments? If they're so dirty, where are the indictments? That's where the indictments are. The indictments are in the oven right now. They're in the oven. Okay? Not even in the oven. They're not even in the oven yet. 
You know where the indictments are? They're being mixed into the dough. You know what I mean? Like, it's raw still. It's not even in the oven yet. It's not even put in the pan yet. Okay? That's where we're at. That's where we're at. That's where the federal investigation is at. There's a lot of evidence to collect and a lot of investigating that goes into collecting that evidence. A lot of it. And that takes a long time. But it's in the beginning stages. Okay? It's in the prep. Right now, it's the prep. Before a big meal, right now, Josh Levy's just chopping up his carrots, man. That's all he's doing. You know? Chopping up his carrots, chopping up his onions. The stew is coming, baby. The stew's coming. The the indictment stew. It's coming, baby. Guarantee. You just gotta wait. Gotta hold off. Gotta wait. Chill out. And all that does is prove that these idiots don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Puffin doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Well, why aren't they handing out indictments right now? I think, I think logically, um, and I look at the evidence, people. I look at the evidence, and then I don't, I'm, a, I'm a fucking retard. No, dude. The evidence fucking dictates part of that evidence would be the fact that these people have a have like an over 90% success rate when it comes to convictions. You know, that's part of the evidence. Another part of the evidence is just simply knowing how long these things take, how long collecting evidence takes place, takes place, how long it takes to do that, how long it takes to put a case together. How long do you think, like a trial, this trial with, Fucking no evidence against Karen Reed is expected to take seven weeks total. That's including the defense's case, presenting their case. Seven weeks total. Right? So four weeks of a month, four weeks of the prosecution being able to present their case. And they don't have a case. You see what I'm getting at here? You imagine how long a trial is going to be on a guy like Michael Morrissey? That's going to take months. It's going to take months. And it took us two years to get here with this flimsy ass fucking case. It took us two years, people. More than two years. You know what I mean? Imagine how long this investigation, this federal investigation is going to take in order to make sure to ensure indictments, to ensure a conviction. It's going to take time, man. It's going to take a while. So you got to get, get, get comfortable. Right now, don't worry about the feds. Don't worry about the feds. Now, the locals in Massachusetts... You guys, like, I, I, I absolutely be biting your fingernails, be waiting. Expect these indictments to come down, just not too soon. But those of us who aren't even locals, I mean, right now, let's just let the locals worry about that. Let them handle their own thing. You know what I mean? In the meantime, uh, we worry about the locals' First Amendment rights. That's something that we need to worry about because that affects us all. And we have to worry about whether or not our local DA is capable of doing the things that Michael Morrissey is doing to Karen Reed. Because a message needs to be sent. Michael Morrissey needs to be made an example of. But right now, that's going to take a while. That is going to take a while. Now, do I think that Brian Higgins is under investigation or or at least a witness do i think that he's a witness sure yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And the proper thing absolutely tells me that he's absolutely a cooperating witness in something and <laughs> and if the defense is using and has access to those findings well i'm going to say that it has to do with the john o'keefe death or at least the, the michael morrissey investigation in regards specifically john o'keefe's death
So definitely, I play. I I think it's something as simple and as little as proving that Michael Morrissey, Michael Morrissey's office, him him testifying that Michael Morrissey's office had something to do or told him to destroy his phone. Um. So now, do I think that he's going to get immunity over that? Now that's the thing that leads me to my next point. Do I think that? Brian Higgins killed John O'Keefe. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think that he had motive to do so. Absolutely. I think he had motive. I think he had means. And I think he had opportunity. Absolutely. 100%. But do I think he did it? I don't have enough to say that, he, that, 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 that I think he did it. Now, it's fair for all of you out there. If you guys know me, you know I'm like this. I just don't, I don't jump to these conclusions quickly. Where I'm like, that dude, I think he did it. If you guys feel based on what happened, that he did it, what based on the information that you're made aware of, that's enough information to be suspicious of him. Absolutely, 100%. It absolutely is. So, yeah, man. Um, now, let me do this real quick because I said I was going to do it. So, you're telling me that this uh, Daniels person said, I, I've got the clip here. Let me look that up. All right. All right. Where's the timestamp at, though? Okay. Got it. Oh, I've seen this, but I don't remember this part. Okay, folks. It's always good to end these things with a few laughs. This is uh this is this is old turtle boy here. Uh once again, folks. Colin Albert was inside 34 Fairview Road on the morning that John O'Keefe was killed. He John O'Keefe was beaten inside that house and left out to die. Yes. Is that Jill? Is that Jill? It's Jill Daniels. Colin was inside. Okay. So this is Jennifer McCabe's sister. <laughs> God damn, dude. I'm, I'm going to try not to like take jabs at her like appearance. Um, And I realize me like saying that I'm going to try not to take jabs at her appearance is clearly a jab at her appearance, but I'm going to leave it at that. Inside the house! <laughs> You're a loser! How what's up? Your skin looks great. Thank you. Your skin looks fantastic. <laughs> My teeth look gross. I've never killed a man, so there's that. Well, you know what? You, you see it on your butt. Did you ever kill a man? Wow. Did you ever kill someone? I don't know. How old is your boyfriend? Like 80? You what? Your homophobic boyfriend? I don't know. Your homophobic boyfriend. Do you have any boyfriends? Hi. <laughs> Mar this is your boyfriend, right? Um, he, he called me a homo. He called me a homo. No, he didn't. Yes, That's oh, that wasn't him. Colin was inside the house. We're gonna talk about that. What do you want to talk about? Are we gonna? It's Jill Daniels. Uh, uh, Colin was inside the house. You know that, right? Do you know you're not a lawyer, you're not a reporter, you're nothing. Yet. I'm an award-winning journalist. I'm an award-winning journalist. I won three awards actually: 2015, 16, and 17. I won three awards in a row. I won 15, 16, 17. I showed you them. I showed you the picture. I did a blog no. just for you. I did a blog just for you. Yes, I did. Yeah. Are you worried about Colin going to jail? No, because Colin didn't do it. But he got, why'd he get grand jury then? Why did everybody? But I don't know. Have you ever been grand jury? Yeah. For this case you have? Yeah. You've been grand jury. How many people, how many murders have you been involved in that you've been grand jury? Because he's a scumbag. He's a loser. He's a loser. They thre they threatened Alan Jackson the other day and lies a little. I stand up for women. They called them whores. They call them whores. They call them whores. But only when they're being cunts. Only when they're being cunts. He called 
them whores. He doesn't know what they're. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 true. I mean, if you're being a cunt, I'm gonna call you a cunt. If you're a man or a woman, you're being a cunt. Like this woman is absolutely being a cunt. Like if she's, I mean, if she wasn't, you know, then Turtle Boy wouldn't just be like, boy, cunt. <laughs> I mean, let's get real. Horse? He doesn't know if they're horse. Okay, but you don't know if they're Boy, it's a, it's a, it's a term of endearment. Yeah, it's a term cunt. of endearment. I wouldn't care because it's a funny oh, okay. word. It's a funny word. It's a funny word. I really wouldn't care. That just happened. Jill Daniels. I got to see Jill. I was just asking to, for Jill Daniels to came down, and then she came down. I got to meet Jill Daniels. That was awesome. Her skin looks great, by the way. I missed it. Hold on. For this case, you have? Hurry then. Why did everybody? I'm going to be the winning journalist. I'm an award winning journalist. I won three awards actually 2015, 16, and 17. I won three awards in a row. I won 15, 16, 17. I showed John O'Keefe was beaten inside that house and left out to die. Yes. Is that Jill? Is that Jill? It's Jill Daniels. Colin was inside the house. You're a loser. How What's up? Your skin looks great. Thank you. Your skin looks fantastic. Your teeth look gross. My teeth look gross. <laughs> I've never killed a man, so there's that. Well, you know what? You you cheated on your wife. Well, but but, 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 but did you ever kill a man? Did you ever kill someone? I don't know anyone. That How old is your boyfriend? Like eighty? You what? Your homophobic boyfriend? boyfriend? I don't know. Your homophobic boyfriend. Do you have any boyfriends? Hi. Mar this is your boyfriend, right? Um, he, he called me a homo. He called me a homo. No, he didn't. Yes. Oh, that wasn't him. Colin was inside the house. We're gonna talk about that. Are we gonna? It's Jill Daniels. Uh, uh, Colin was inside the house. You know that, right? Do you know you're not a lawyer, you're not a reporter, you're nothing. Yet. I'm an award-winning journalist. I'm an award-winning journalist. I won three awards actually: 2015, 16, and 17. I won three awards in a row. I won 15, 16, 17. I showed you them. I showed you the picture. I did a blog just for you. I did a blog just for you. Yes, I did. Yeah. Are you worried about Colin going to jail? No, because Colin didn't do it. But he got. Why did he get grand juried then? Why did everybody? But I don't know. Have you ever been grand juried? Yeah. For this case, you have? You've been grand jury. How many people, how many murders have you been involved in that you've been grand jury? Okay, so this is the wrong clip then. All right. So where's the phone call? Oh, that's Julie Albert's sister. Okay. Okay, got you. That's Julie Albert's sister, not Jen McCabe's sister. Got you. Got you. 604 50 minute mark. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Give me a second, folks. <laughs> she dude they're out so dude, is that not so emblematic of who these people are is that not canton in a nutshell right there they're obviously drunk he's not going to jail you're going to let's call her back we're calling her back right now hey back Kids, you fucking loser. I, Go away. You loser? Who who are you? Is this Julie? She called me a fucking loser. She called me a loser. Call again. Seriously, what do you want with me? I just want to know one thing. Find out that Terry Reed is a fucking killer. Why do you keep calling me? Why don't you get a life and fucking focus on? I just, I just want to know one thing. So, what evidence do you have that Colin wasn't there? Where's the what evidence okay, do you have? What evidence do you 
that he was there. The, Brian, okay, yeah. Brian Albert's grand jury testimony said okay. that he was there. Oh, okay. No, Brian Albert said that. Brian Albert said that Colin was in the house. You think you're so right about everything. I know I'm right. I've seen it. No, you're not. You're I have the documents. I'm looking at it right now. How am I a piece of shit? Your son. Now, is Jill Collins' mom? Is Jill Collins' mom? Where was he? What what where, what evidence do you have? Okay, let's have a conversation. Aunt. Okay. 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 So, Julie is Collins' mom. All right. Sorry. There's a lot to follow here. Uh, so, so Julie is Jill has no kids. Shocker. Uh, so Julie is Colin's mom. Okay. Got it. And um, this, and he's talking to Colin's aunt. Who are the biggest friggin' piece of trash in the world? You get kicks off of getting Karen Reed hit John and killed him. You freaking get money off of this. You are a sick human being. Do you know that? So, what evidence so do you, sick. can I ask you something? What evidence? Turtle boy, what the fuck is your name? Fucking Aiden. What, what is your name? My name's like, Aiden. Clarence? Aiden, Aiden, you can call me Aiden. You can call me doctor. No, but... I don't want to call. I want to call you a dickhead. Uh, you okay. You are a piece of shit. Do you know that? I don't. Like, I don't. I disagree. I have... Okay. Are you taping me? Because that's illegal. I because said. I said late. live to tape. Yes, we're live to tape. I've said oh, that. You're late. You're live. Okay. Well, let me say this right now to you, really quick. Okay. Okay. My nephew and Brian Albert and Jen Albert are not fucking guilty. Your little good lover that you're banging or you fucking want to bang, Who? guess what? Who? She's, oh, Karen! You think I want to okay. bang Karen? That's why, you think you that's why I'm doing yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, okay, guess what? You, the cat's out of the bag, dude. Okay? You see, that's so fucking ridiculous. Like, it's so fucking ridiculous. Okay. What's out of the bag? I don't know how you got my number. You're a creep. You call me, you call my family, you call whatever. Why are you such a creep? Can I just ask you something? You're One question. What what evidence do you have that Colin was not in the house? Serious question. What evidence do you have that he was? The, like, that's a serious so, so okay, I have a, I have a, no, no, no. That's a serious question. What do you have that he was in the house? Brian right now. Brian okay, now we know now that Colin Albert was in the house. They tried saying that he wasn't in the house at all. And then they said now that he left before John O'Keefe got there. But here is someone screaming and yelling, saying her nephew was not in the house. But we know now that he was. So. Right. That's the thing is, is did, did they dupe her? Is because she sounds sincere. Sounds to me like they all fucking that everybody was just like, you don't know what you don't worry about it, you know. And and you know, didn't tell her everything. Obviously, I mean, the less people that know, the better. Brian Albert's grand jury testimony. I do. They're that? lovely. Yeah, yeah, and your wife hates you, so okay. whatever. Okay, but that's, but, you're changing yeah, the subject. The point. Yeah, no, no, change the subject, really? Yeah. You are a blogger. Where's your, oh, first of all, I gotta ask you this one thing, because this is one thing I've ever, want, I've always wanted to ask you. Where's your award? How? Your award-winning journalist, where's that award? Oh, I'm the 2000, 2017 oh, Worcester okay. County <laughs> Best <laughs> Media Outlet. Well, it still counts. I have. I've didn't done blogs about it. Okay, okay, okay. Guess what? Shut the fuck up. Oh, what? sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry. Do you know how to shut up? Do you ever know how to shut up? I'm trying. I'm asking you right out. Do you? Do Sometimes. You know okay. No, you don't. Because I you're mean, fucking loser. Oh, I went to. He's not saying that he won the fucking Pulitzer. You know what I mean? He's saying that he's an award-winning journalist. He's an award-winning journalist. What's the fucking problem? Like, why? Why is she acting like? It, <laughs> 
very weird. I mean, again, it's not the fucking Pulitzer. Nobody's saying it is. Who cares? Like, because somebody gave me a thing, dude. You have tur- people. Your people. You call yourself a turtle. A turtle. Do you know what I mean? A turtle. Yeah, what, we're, we're getting a little off. That's what I mean. Like, mean. like, why? Why would he not be proud of being an award-winning? He's a, he, technically he's an award-winning journalist. Of course he is. How many bloggers do you know win awards? Whoa, oh, we're getting a little off track. Shut the fuck up. Whoa, you're so Seriously. angry. Why are you so angry? Oh, I'm angry because you're yeah. so sick of you. You have ruined so many people's fucking lives and Karen fucking killed him. Karen did. And you know what? The truth is going to come out. You know what? Fucking turtle boy hated him. Well, but, but uh, can I read the grand jury testimony right here? Uh, what, what, excuse me? It says Colin. I'm reading He's grand mad, jury dude. testimony. It says Colin Albert was oh, also. Guess what? Guess what? Shut the fuck up. Uh, I can't even talk. Colin was in the house, and but he wasn't there when everybody came back from the party. Everyone, According to Brian and Nicole Albert's testimony before the grand jury, their crazy. nephew Colin Albert was also present. Colin Albert was in the house, but prior to when John and Col- Brian and Higgins and all. Oh, actually, one question: Why do you only start? Why is it? Guilty until proven innocent. Why is that? What about Higgins? What about everybody? Like why Higgins? What you want? Are you? Why are you turning on Higgins? No, I'm asking you. Why, why, no, I'm just. I'm not saying. I'm saying there was six people in the house. Why are you focusing on Brian and Colin only? Colin was well, in the house. Well, I don't. I, I feel like I've given. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so again, remember why we're here, folks. Uh. <laughs> um, as entertaining as <laughs> as that exchange is, it's not my concern. Uh, my concern is whether or not someone way long time ago, and I mean, how long ago was this? Let me see this. Uh, this was eight months ago. Eight months ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now, I get what she's saying. Her argument is, well, why are you only focused on the Alberts? But she doesn't realize how incriminating that is to Brian Higgins. Because I don't think, I don't, I don't think that she necessarily knew. I don't think that she knew, at least at the time of this recording, that she knew what happened to uh, John O'Keefe. I don't think that she knew all the facts. I think that she was lied to and kept in the dark by her own family members who were just like, No, of course not. Why would we? We would never do that. What do you mean? Of course not. Um, So, but I'll I'll play it one more time. But I don't think that, yeah, I'm not getting, I'm not getting the vibe that she's a culprit in this in any way, shape or form. I think that she was probably lied to. Um, She might know now, but I don't think at the time of this phone call, at least that's not the impression I'm getting right now as I'm listening to it. Maybe I'll change my mind. I don't know. Given Jen a pretty John significant John amount of time. I know his phone. Feet. Then how did his phone go up and down? Then how? Okay, and you're saying that her boyfriend ripped up the basement. Okay. <laughs> then how did his phone go up and down the stairs? Then if he if 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 Karen didn't go in the house, I mean if, if John didn't go in the house, then why did his phone go up and down stairs? Okay, she hung up on him. I, I, when John and Colin, and Brian and Higgins and all, oh, actually, one question. Why do you only start, why is it guilty until proven innocent? Why is that? What about Now, him? the same could go for Karen Reed. Same question could be asked. You know? I mean, why, why are, why are you assuming that she's guilty? You know? Now, understandably, we're talking about her family here. Of course, they're going to say, she's going to say, why are you pointing fingers at my innocent family? My innocent family. Why are they guilty until proven innocent? But it's funny because, I mean, why is that a a, a point of her argument? You know what I mean? Like, because she sure as shit, she sure as shit is going, prove it, prove it. When it gets to court, like her argument against Turtle Boy saying, I'm looking at the grand jury testimony right here that Colin Albert was absolutely inside the fucking house. So why 
you know, why are you sitting here arguing that he wasn't? When I'm looking at testimony, grand jury testimony saying that he was. Higgins, what about everybody? Like what Higgins, what you want? Are you why are you turning on Higgins? No, I'm asking you. What, what? Now that is that right there is a sign of somebody who is trying to get to the truth, right? I want you to think about that for a second. This is very telling on Turtle Boy's part and what his intentions are. Because if, if Turtle Boy's intentions are just to just to point fingers at somebody, because he's he feels, I, I know that he feels pretty strongly about it. He said so on my show that he felt that Colin Albert was responsible for John O'Keefe's death. But this indicates to me that he's like, okay, I just want to get to the truth. This indicates to me that everything that he has uncovered points to Colin Albert having the most motive and being the most likely person to have done this. But now she, she brings up Higgins and Turtle Boy's antennas go up right away. Turtle Boy goes, wait, 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 wait Higgins, why are you bringing up Higgins? That's somebody looking for the truth. That's somebody who in his mind just went, wait a minute. Okay, well, what about Higgins? Hold on. Did I miss something when it comes to Higgins? I'm I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. Well, no, I'm just I'm not saying I'm saying there was six people in the house. Why are you focusing on Brian and Colin only? Colin was well, in the house. I don't I, I feel like I've given Jen a pretty significant amount of time. I no, nope. that's also that's also like if I'm <laughs> like just applying my experience in covering true crime cases. Uh, usually someone who's real guilty uh, and and is pissed off about the fact that they are being cornered and what they do is they panic. They say, well, well, why are you looking at me? They did that too. This happens on YouTube all the time too. When somebody gets accused of doing some nefarious shit. Well, why are you pointing the finger at me? Why aren't you pointing the finger at, you know what I mean? This is the kind of thing Betty does. Why are you looking at me? JLR did it first. JLR did that too. He was there. If I'm pointing the finger at Bullhorn Betty for for getting uh for getting the Wells fired from their job, she's gonna go, well, uh, Olivia was there too. Why is my getting all the heat for it? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And anybody does that. Everyone does that. Anybody who is already faced with the fact that they can't that that faced with the fact that they have been cornered with the truth and they are absolutely implicated they go well, okay well, well what about that what about them because now they know they're going down right they know they're going down and now they want to know they they they, they don't want to go down alone because <laughs> being implicated in something you don't want to be alone and her instinct to protect her family, her instinct to protect her fam to protect her family, she does the same thing. Once Turtle Boy corners her with the truth and says, "This is what happened." What do you mean? Then she panics and goes, "Well, why are you only looking at them? Why are you only looking at Colin and 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 Brian? The fuck? Higgins was there too, you know." So, but. She did say six other people in the house. Now, out of those six other people, there are only two that weren't related to the Alberts. And that would be Brian Higgins and Julie Nagel, right? So, um, I mean, again, that doesn't point to me. That doesn't mean that Jill Daniels knows what happened and who was responsible. That's not. Um, yeah. And John O'Keefe. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, of course, Benjamin John. I know. Um
Yeah, now they're saying eight or some shit. Right. Uh, Jill Daniels is not the grass. Um, no, I, I, I definitely. That's the thing is, is I don't think that any solid evidence based on in conclusion uh, of this live stream, okay, in conclusion, I don't think that there is any solid evidence that indicates that, 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 that implicates um, anyone that was inside that house as far as the, the actual murder of John O'Keefe. Now there is, again, there's, there's motive, there's opportunity, there's means. Of course, nobody's denying that. What I'm saying is there's no actual solid evidence that somebody in that house, anybody in particular in that house, or all of them in that house, killed John O'Keefe. Um, because if there were, then the defense would have already presented it in their motion to dismiss. If there was, was evidence made available to the defense, I should say. Let me correct myself. If there was evidence, if there was evidence that absolutely beyond a reasonable doubt indicate it implicated anyone in that house, the defense would have used it. If they had it available to them, the defense would have used it. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. What I'm saying is the defense doesn't have it. Karen Reed's defense doesn't have it. So um and I, I I don't know. Now, I don't think that Higgins, I think it makes, I, I think Higgins has just as much motive and opportunity and means that Colin Albert did, if not more. Because the question is whether or not Colin was even in the house while John O'Keefe was there. That's still up in the air. But it's confirmed when and where Higgins was when John O'Keefe was dead. And he was absolutely inside that house when John O'Keefe was killed. And he would have absolutely had to pass by John O'Keefe's body laying in the lawn when he left. He would have absolutely seen it. And the jury is going to figure this out. I mean, a jury is going to see this evidence. A jury is going to see... Is, go, is going to ride out to 34 Fairview and see whether or not. Now, the thing is, they can't mimic the snow on the ground. But I want, I want every single juror to walk from the stoop of 34 Fairview out to the road. And I want them all to say that they couldn't see a body if it was laying there. I mean, I, I want to hear every single juror say that before I'm convinced that it, it's not suspicious <laughs> that it, nobody saw John O'Keefe lying in that in, in, on that property. Nobody did. It's crazy. Nobody did. Insane. It's a miracle. That nobody saw John O'Keefe laying out there. But the question is, if we're staying focused, if we're staying on task, if we're keeping our eye on the ball, which is Karen Reed's defense, which is Karen Reed's, the case against Karen Reed, prosecutors have nothing. Prosecutors have nothing. I mean, <laughs> it, it, this this whole case is a fucking farce. This whole prosecution is a farce. It's a sham. Plain and simple. Who do I think will do jail time? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Who do I think will do jail time? Um, I think Higgins is the most likely to do jail time, seeing as they have something on him. But he could also be the least likely to do jail time, possibly, because he's the one who's going to be talking. 
But do I think he's a fucking grass? Absolutely. Do I think that he's a grass in the John O'Keefe case, and meaning that he's going to point the finger at who's responsible and protect himself? I don't know about that yet. I don't know about that yet. What I think is he is going to grass on Michael Morrissey when he takes the stand in federal court testifying that Michael Morrissey's office instructed him to break his cell phone, to destroy his cell phone, as well as uh, Brian Alberts. That's what I think. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You need it. You got it. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Sherry D, thank you so much. I hope that I hope that quenched that 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 gave you your fix. And uh yeah, folks, I mean <laughs> that's where I'm at on this. I think we've got a lot to figure out. I think more is gonna come out at trial. I mean, trial is going to be crazy, folks, because remember, you know, the defense is going to take two weeks to to present their case. But I don't think that it's I, I don't think we're going to have to wait two weeks uh, or sorry. I don't think we're going to have to wait four weeks to get to any bombshells. I think that there's going to be a lot of witnesses or at least a few that the prosecution is going to bring up to the stand and have testify. And the defense is going to destroy. Uh, the, the, I mean, I just, I, 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 this is, in theory, an absolute slam dunk for the process or for the defense. In theory, an absolute slam dunk. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, I wouldn't say all that. Now I'm going to cover, I I don't think I've ever covered jury selection before, but I'm going to cover so, jury selection in this case because this is the most interesting case that I've ever covered. And I think that um, jury selection in this case is going to be very interesting uh, considering that jury selection and jury, I mean, it's been such a, such an issue, Right. That, you know, the prosecution is so scared of the jury being tampered with in some way, shape or form. But they've tampered with the jury just as much, if not more, than they're claiming that Turtle Boy and Karen Reed's defense did. Did I uh, do jury selection for I don't think I did jury selection for Gannon, Cherry. I don't think I did. I don't remember doing so, but maybe I did. But uh, regardless... I will be covering jury selection in this case, 100%. Absolutely be covering jury selection in this case because I think that jury selection is going to be fascinating. Um, in theory, it's going to be fascinating. Right, Benjamin John, exactly. The questions asked are, are going to be interesting because I think we're going to see a lot of what the, the Commonwealth is going to be aiming for. You're going to be able to read a lot into what, the intentions of the defense and the intentions of the Commonwealth are going to be based on the questions that they're going to have for potential jurors. So as long as we use our eyes, people, you got to use your eyes, pay attention, pay attention to the questions that are going to be asked to these potential jurors. And that's going to tell us a lot, I believe, as far as what the intentions uh, of both parties are going to be uh, aiming for here, what they're going to be doing here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting folks. Hey, Elizabeth Haley, I, Elizabeth Hanley Beloli. I love cops. I do. I do. I love cops. I do. I I'm one of those people. I do love cops. Um, I think they're absolutely necessary. Um, now on a deeper level, being a borderline libertarian i i long for the day that cops are no longer necessary because 
I don't get in trouble with the law. I am perfectly capable of policing myself. So I, I, I long for the day that police are no longer necessary, but I am a realist and I believe that we are no longer near that or we're nowhere near that. Uh, we're nowhere even close to that yet. So, yeah. Um, oh! I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. We got a super chat. <laughs> Appreciate you, Anne Marie. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, the um, uh, if there's six people, why do they choose Higgins to say why not him and some of the other of the six? Because, like I said, they were relate. They're related to the Alberts. She's. In that phone call, you're listening to Jill Daniels, who's the, who's the sister of Julie Albert. And um, that is, I mean, this is her family. They're a tight-knit family. And 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 if the Alberts are, are, are as prominent of a family in that area as they are and powerful as they are, um, people who are part of that family are going to take pride in that. They're going to be very protective of that. Um, and if people in that family are benefiting from these people abusing their positions, uh, then they're going to protect that too. I mean, they're going to protect that. They're, 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 they're not going to, they're, 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 they're definitely going to lose sleep over, over disloyalty and not protecting what's not just family, but family that's in their best interest to have, you know? So they're going to protect that. That's that's just it, it's human nature for Jill Daniels to be protective of her family, you know. Uh, so I don't think that that implicates Brian Higgins any more uh, than I felt he was implicated prior to listening to that clip. Um, but. You know, but do I think Higgins is a dirty, dirty motherfucker? Absolutely, people. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Totally, totally, totally. Yeah, no, Josh Levy will not go easy on these people. Uh, but I, I promise you that what Josh Levy is looking for is results. That's what he's looking for. This is what, this is how the justice system works. They're not looking for, uh, they're not looking for arrests. They're looking for convictions, okay? And an arrest is merely a prelude to a conviction, people. That's all it is. So um, in order to ensure convictions to take place, and especially if these are powerful people, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. So be patient. Uh, and, you know, you guys locally in Massachusetts, keep fighting the good fight, man. Uh, I'm behind you 100%. I love you guys. Uh, and I support you absolutely uh, in your pursuit for living in a in a um, corrupt, free environment. So, uh, guys, I love you. Uh, I love you all very, very much. Hold on. Do you have any response for the to the allegations against you in the Red Bar report? Want to give you you the benefit of the doubt, but screenshots looked bad. My the allegations against me in the Red Bar report. I don't know what the Red Bar report is, but you get a super chat dance in closing. People, I love you guys very much. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the um uh likes make sure to hit the like and all that stuff that you're supposed to do in order to help a youtube channel grow and blah, 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 blah. i don't know shit about that um but anyway i appreciate it makes makes me feel very special that you guys love to spend time with me because i love spending time with you so thank you guys very much um anyways guys uh i owe you a super chat dance have a good one we will do this again very soon, my friends. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super
got a super chat. I think we got a super chat. I think we got a super chat. I think we got a super chat. Super chat.